<clears throat> Hello, how is everybody doing? We are here for uh, we are here for Classic Cast with uh, Brian Gonzalez and <laughs> or, sorry Omar Gonzalez and Brian Birmingham. I was looking at I was looking at Brian. And I was like, with Omar <laughs> Gonzalez and and Brian Birmingham. <laughs> so no, we're here with uh, Bromar. We're here with, yeah, we're here with Bromar. We're here with Bromar guys. We're here with o Omar Gonzalez and Brian Birmingham, and. Uh, yeah, we're very, very excited. These are the two uh, lead developers for WoW Classic. Of course, we're here with Stay Safe TV, Tips Out Baby. Guys, this is the last episode of Classic Cast that we're having. Uh, before, before Classic comes out, we'll be taking a, a little hiatus for, for the early Russia Classic. But uh, we're very, very, very excited to have uh, Brian and Omar here with us here today. And uh, yeah, can you guys go ahead? I mean, a lot of people know who you guys are. But a lot of people also don't know who you guys are. Can you guys go ahead and introduce yourselves and kind of say what you guys have done working on WoW, uh, your history with Blizzard and all that? Sure. Uh, I'll go first. My name is Brian Birmingham. Uh, I'm the lead software engineer on World of Warcraft Classic. And uh, I've been at Blizzard for 13 years. I first joined Blizzard back in 2006 around uh, when Patch 1.10 was coming out. I was, of course, an avid World of Warcraft player back then. I was playing a ton of it, and so I was really excited when I got the job opportunity to come work at Blizzard. And I worked on World of Warcraft for about eight and a half years. Then I got a job on the Hearthstone team. I worked there for about three years. And then I came back to World of Warcraft to help work on uh, World of Warcraft Classic. And I'm Oren Gonzalez. I'm a senior software engineer on World of Warcraft Classic. Uh, I've been with Blizzard for just over 16 years. Uh, I started in the QA department. Uh, I did a little bit of testing for Warcraft 3, the Frozen Throne. Uh, but immediately after that, uh, we started uh, QA and working on World of Warcraft. And it's just been such a phenomenal game. I, I stuck with it. Uh, I got to start on the development team uh, once I had uh, graduated college and got my uh, my degree, I started off as an, an engineer in the just after launch, and I've been working on World of Warcraft continuously ever since. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. I, I have to say real quick, I, I think chat is so excited that we're getting an encore because we summoned you once. <laughs> we, we summoned you once at the end of one of the stress tests. So I think they're super happy that we got a chance to summon you guys again. Uh, a, well, a lot I'm of people super are happy to be here. This. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, um, I'm happy to be here too. Thank you guys. <laughs> yeah, this is yeah, awesome. It's, it's a pleasure having you guys on. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I kind of wanted to go ahead and lead off with uh, is we, we've heard the story a, a little bit before. But kind of the, the story of how Classic initially came to be, where, where you know, the, the not necessarily just the idea came from, but one of you guys kind of realized, like, wait, this is actually going to, this is actually possible. Uh, yeah. Do you guys want to go ahead and say that story? Absolutely. I'll just lead it in a little bit yeah. because it's mostly Omar's story. But, uh, but early on, like, there's been, of course, this huge outpouring of support and uh, of uh, passion around WoW Classic and people asking us for years and years to make this. And it was one of those things that we kind of, always thought we didn't really want to do because we had always kind of thought of it as a, would we really want to take that old 15 year old code base with uh, the bugs and exploits that we knew were there then that we fixed all the problems integrating it with our modern uh, infrastructure that didn't seem like a good way to go. And so when we got all this outpouring of support, there was really like a, a, a plan to kind of try to do a different approach. And I guess, Omar, you want to talk about that? That was basically you who were doing that. Yeah, I got uh, pulled into a, a meeting uh, at some point, uh, obviously, before we announced where, because again, we, we've had discussions uh, uh, in response to sort of this demand for, for classic, and, and we knew what we didn't want to do, and we knew how we weren't going to go about it, but we still want to talk about uh, how we could move forward. And, um, and sort of the, there was this sort of thought experiment pitch uh, that uh, was being discussed at a pretty high level, and that was. Uh, what if we could take all the old data, all the old quests, all, uh, all the old bits and parts of the game that all the players see on their screen, but run that on our modern code base and our modern infrastructure? Like that was at that point, it was just, uh, could this work? Uh, is this a good idea? <laughs> um, 
but they we felt it was worth exploring uh so i i spent a little bit of time i i, I kind of was sequestered uh in a room for for uh for a little while and, and i just i just yeah <laughs> <laughs> in siberia to make sure i had no no distractions whatsoever whatsoever um to just just kind of play out this idea how, how would it work transforming all the old data which is as we talked about in in sort of the old format could we even run it on our on our new code and new infrastructure mm -hmm. and so after the the two weeks uh i came away with with a short demo uh it was uh i recorded myself playing about 40 minutes of uh no mage uh and it it and we saw a little bit of footage of that at blizzcon uh it was the basic core mechanics i could pick up a quest i could uh, complete it uh the spawns would would be there the the i could cast spells they the, like the numbers behind them were were way off mm -hmm. uh but you know I, creatures would die i could pick up old spells and um uh, and i i got to about level five and uh i came back to to sort of the leads and said well okay in two weeks this is about the the tiny slice of, of what that that looked at um and so the they went back and and uh, talked about it a little bit more, um, and uh, it was shortly after that demo that we sort of had the whole uh, project greenlit. Uh, we we started to put together a team mm -hmm. um, pretty shortly after that, um, and uh, we had that uh, big wonderful announcement at at BlizzCon 2007, and uh, we were still building the team at that point. Oh yeah, like that, that like that was. A really, really early announcement. Like, like mm -hmm. I, yeah. I don't know. I like, yeah, I don't know if if everyone really appreciates. Normally, we don't like. We wouldn't normally announce. Like, given where we were, yeah. Like at the time, like it I, was I re barely a team. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. really true. Like, I remember it was kind of intimidating. Like, I had just taken the job. They had just said, like, yeah, we're gonna do this. We want uh, a team to be built up around this. Omar and I. And I think like one other person at the time were just starting to think about it. And they were like, we're gonna announce it at BlizzCon. And I was like, the one coming up this year. Like right now, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I kind of, I kind of assumed it was no. The like the the one year later, yeah. <laughs> after we, had, you know, after we had spent some time on it, but uh, no, we 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 kind of went for it in 2017. Yeah, and it was really exciting too because like yeah, having that like obviously that that put a little bit of pressure on us, but it was kind of a good kind of pressure. Like, hey, if we've told everybody we're gonna do this. We gotta get moving. Like, yeah. let's get this going. We gotta like get get started, get get things going, and uh, and really make progress as soon as we can. So we came back and uh, like uh, took the prototype and said, okay, that's the right approach you want to take. Let's do that again, but a little bit more like careful this time. Make yeah. sure we record everything we're doing. <laughs> like, make make notes along the way. Build up a bigger team and share with them the strategy. And uh, and then we started doing that. Make sure that our tools and our systems could support having a set of data that was separate from the the mainline set of data, the the modern WoW set of data, so we could have them kind of running in parallel tracks and then use all of our like build systems to be able to build both of them together and have the data protected from one another so they wouldn't spill into each other. So we did all that kind of building right after that. And then that was, you know, we we're off and running. Yeah, it was full full steam ahead ever since uh, that announcement. Yeah. And here we are a few days away. From, yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> did you guys have any idea how, like any idea how big this was going to be or how much support or hype there was going to be behind this? Sort of. I mean, like, I don't yeah. know if I would say, like, I quite understood the, the scale to which how people were going to be so excited. Like, I knew people were excited. Mm -hmm. I knew I was excited. I knew Omar yeah. was excited, yeah. right? Like, I, so it wasn't like I was completely unaware that this was an exciting and fun thing that people wanted to do. And obviously, like I said, people had been asking us to do this for years. It had been mm -hmm. something we thought about. Um, but I didn't realize just quite how many people and how excited those people would be when we started talking about it. And I started seeing that even after that first BlizzCon announcement when uh, we announced it and everybody just went wild, right? There was yeah. cheering. Yeah. I remember people oh, like, yeah. there were videos people took of the announcement. They were like sitting amongst the audience and yeah. had videos of that. And you could hear people whispering like, are they gonna, are they gonna? <laughs> is, it, is that what they're gonna say? And then when we did, it was like, they were just like flipping out. There was a lot of disbelief. It was yeah. a lot of, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was really exciting. It was it was a great I and mean, it was a really great BlizzCon for me too. Like talking to people after that, as they were like so excited, and just wanted to come up and be like, "Oh, thank you guys so much for doing this. I'm so excited about it." Oh, I have a, a great little story in that BlizzCon. So we had a little sort of a, a media, a pre-BlizzCon like media mixer. 
uh-huh. uh, where I, I got a chance to kind of uh, meet some members of, of the press and media the, the day before we had made the announcement. Mm-hmm. So I, I knew we were going to talk about it, <laughs> but they didn't know. Uh-huh. And uh, I, I was carefully, but it was a, it was a topic of discussion. Yeah. People were wondering, like, why are they doing this? Uh, and so, like, I, I kind of went around and, and, and I kind of tried, tried to gauge interest, like, what do you think, like, what would that look like to you? Or what's your level of, of excitement kind of in my head knowing? Yeah. Well, Cause I had that information, but they didn't. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was, it was kind of fantastic for, for me to um, see that level of excitement. Everyone just wanted to go back to their memories. Uh, and, and just specifically to your point, the, it wasn't a surprise that there was excitement. Like we knew that there was excitement and demand that that wasn't surprising but the scale of it yeah mm. was surprising like it like not that there was excitement we knew that there was but just how vast it was mm-hmm. and and how many people uh and and players want to want to come back to it I, I think that that was one of the most surprising aspects to me yeah mm-hmm. absolutely like the name reservations like almost <laughs> every server is full right now did you guys expect the name reservations to go up so fast do you expect that many people to register before I was really excited to see that, I have to say. Like, uh, we knew, again, like, that there would be some excitement. But, uh, yeah, it's really exciting to see just how quickly they filled up. And fortunately, we were there ready to respond with new servers. And we're going to continue to be ready to respond with new servers as we go forward if we need to. Uh, But, yeah, like... We're, we're really trying at this point to encourage people like spread out, like take up. We, we've got more servers that you guys can spread out. I really hope everybody gets that <laughs> message and oh, tries to pick one of the servers that is, uh, is is not quite so full right now. Yeah, we we, op- we opened with knowing a, a conservative number of realms initially. So so it wasn't a complete surprise that they might end up very full mm-hmm. towards the end. Uh, mm-hmm. that, that wasn't complete surprise because we, we have contingency plans for, right. for the level of demand. Um, but you know, when we saw it play out, uh, we were like, Whoa, okay. So, so we had, we had a few servers that, that were, that we have waiting in, in the, in the wings. Yeah. Uh, but we're like, no, we let's, let's go now. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. In, in response to the, this crazy support that, uh, we have from our fans and we're happy to, to sort of do our part and Mm -hmm. uh and provide room and and uh, capacity for you guys to come in and play yeah Yeah, so these servers that are full right now what are the queue times looking like on those servers do you think it's really hard to predict exact queues but i would say if they're marked as full you should expect excessive queues you really Mm -hmm. ought to move off of them if they're full uh i i know like it's it's hard to convince people because like nobody can say for sure from just like I've reserved a name, whether or not everybody's going to show up on day one to play all at the same time. So like there it's comparing apples to oranges a little bit, but it's a lot of people. You should move, move to one of the ones that is medium. Okay. Medium is still going to be a healthy population, especially mm-hmm. on sort of like day one. Yeah. Day one is probably be, going to be because everyone is going to be sitting at that character selection screen. Yeah. Everyone wants to log in and enter world at the same time. Uh, that's going to be when it's most rough. You're going to see most players log in, and once they're in, stay playing mm-hmm. for you know an excess. And that that actually it makes queue times even longer, given the same number of players waiting. Right. Uh, we, you know, we hope that that will sort of smooth out and, and speed up beyond the the first 24 hours. But we're caref- going to be carefully monitoring, and uh, the best the best advice we can give is try to spread out a little bit. Yeah, make a plan with your with your guildmates to find someplace else that you could move to when you see those queues. So, mm-hmm. plan ahead. Make sure you're ready yeah, so that when you see the queues, you know where all, you're all going e- together. It's it's easy. It's a little bit easiest to move now or mm-hmm. to shift around now before anyone's actually logged in and leveled up. So we continue to highly encourage that now rather than later. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, and, and let's say it is later. Um, do you guys have any plans to? You know, you guys talked about free character transfers possibly coming in sometime after launch. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have any contingency plans for that right now? Do you know when you would implement that service or is it a little bit further down the line? We don't have any specific plans yet. I mean, like we definitely have those capabilities and we've been talking about that for exactly these reasons. We want to make sure that we're prepared to offer the appropriate service at the appropriate time. So Mm -hmm. we don't have a specific date in mind for when we would do any specific thing. We have right now a plan to have a lot of contingency plans, a lot of things that we could do in response Mm -hmm. to what we see. So if we see huge queues, we can open new realms. If we see them really late, we could talk about free character migrations. Uh, we'll, we'll, We'll be able to make those decisions 
based on what happens. Yeah, mm -hmm. for us, for us, it's a matter we have the capability now. Mm -hmm. It's it's developed and ready to go. As far as uh, when we would pull the trigger and under what circumstances, we uh, because it's it's we will do that in response to what we're seeing in queues. We mm -hmm. don't really want to pre-announce that at the moment. Uh, the the idea here is to be as responsive as as we can to to queue times and player demand and see how those actually shape up. We, yeah. And th that just kind of goes to sort of this, the whole philosophy for for things like how many rumps do we we spin up? Like everyone can kind of make their expectations and make their predictions, but we, we really want to be making our decisions based on sort of the concrete information yeah. of how this actually plays out as opposed to trying to, trying to predict. I mean, we still have our predictions and expectations, but we're all we also have contingencies in either direction. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, like goes to like our content unlock plan too. Like that, that we also don't want to like pre-announce the dates for those because we want to be able to control those based on how players play and experience the content. Uh, you guys yeah. have already talked about that, right? Like the six content phases that we've mm -hmm. done. Yeah. Uh, is that something you guys want me to go over again, or is that cool? Uh, I think I think we we spent a lot of time kind of kind of beating that oh, over okay, the head that. for for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> it was a long time uh, talking about that. So so okay, we, we good. don't need to talk about that too much. Um, but one thing just to kind of uh, touch on the the server and population, uh, I, I guess concerns. A big reason for the pre registration and names was so you guys could get a gauge of how many people are going to be playing on what servers. Mm -hmm. There's probably going to be a whole lot of people that have not activated their accounts already and already you know registered their names and stuff like that so if every server ends up being full or, or the overwhelming majority of servers look to be full now uh how big of a concern i guess is, is that for launch like are you guys going to be like okay i mean we're, we gotta we gotta pull the trigger now as far as contingency plans go or uh what, what, what are well, you guys gonna see well so certainly that's what we're talking about is mm -hmm. we have already launched new realms in various in i think uh in like europe United States or North America, Europe, and China. We've all uh, launched new realms there. All of those are the realms or the uh, the regions that we're seeing uh, lots of uh, people reserving names, and so we are already responding. And so we are also increasing our our contingency plans, starting to adjust those contingency plans and make more plans and prepare more things for the, the this to be like a really crazy release. So like Omar already mm -hmm. said, we already did imagine that it could go this way, but we have no way to be 100% sure. So we have like a, a kind of a, a cone of uncertainty, like there's a, a wide range that we could expect that it might happen in. And so we said, okay, well, let's start with a small number of realms because it's really easy to grow and it's mm -hmm. harder to shrink. And so we start with a small number and then as we see the populations showing up on them, we increase more and more and more. And if it continues to increase, we'll continue to increase realms to be able to meet that. Yeah, mm -hmm. one of the, one of the benefits of running on our modern infrastructure as opposed to the like oh, yeah. literal old code and, and how those old system works is that it's way way easier for us to open new realms now given the systems that we have that we have available to us mm -hmm. that it, it's it's not really a, a blocking concern. Right. We have the realms that are available now. We have realms ready, you know, in reserve and you know we still have capacity beyond that and you know it's much easier for us to respond and acquire new capacity as as player as we see players engage and and play but uh again just going back we you know we have we we're preparing as best we can for a number of different scenarios um and uh core pieces that we want everyone who wants to play to play but we are also want to make sure we end up with very healthy realm populations. Mm -hmm. So in many cases, we're trying to find sort of that optimal balance between uh, sort of our, our, how launch plays out and how how the long term game plays out. Yeah. Uh, way way down the road, uh, like the, the like that's important in our minds, and we we like there's there's an optimal point in order to to kind of get the the best out, outcomes for both short-term and long-term, and that's kind of what we're focused on as well. That's yeah. awesome. So like, launch is going to be crazy, but you mentioned this. I'm really concerned about phase one into phase two. When you get mm -hmm. rid of layering, at the same time, Dire Mall's mm -hmm. out, World Bosses are out. There's another reason yeah. for people to log in again. What makes you confident that you won't need layering with that huge surge of players when phase two starts? When people are coming back or they have a reason to log in again? The thing that makes us confident is that we ex is that we expect to be able to launch new realms. Like it is that same mm -hmm. thing again. We're going to be able to launch those and spread them out. And and the fact that we are going to have uh, ultimately realm caps and realm queues, we aren't just letting as many people as we as want to play on each onto each server. We need to have an upper bound 
so that we can pull that back before phase two and have only one layer per, per realm. Uh, that's that's the goal is make sure that we can get to one layer per realm. That's something we've committed to. We really want to make sure we can hit that. And so in order to do that, that's why we have to have some upper bound on the number of players that can play on a single realm and queue people after that. Mm -hmm. If uh, if we really didn't care about getting to one realm, we could just what, sky's the <laughs> limit. But no, we, that, that's a commitment. We really want to make sure that there's one layer per realm by, mm -hmm. by the time we get to phase two. Yeah, so you're hoping I, that. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, just a follow up. Uh, I know a lot of players ask for specific numbers uh, as far as layers and players per layer, mm -hmm. and and we we really have have been holding that back. And one of the reasons uh, to do that is because for us these aren't like constant fixed numbers. These are settings that that we can use, that we can dial, and we can adjust. Uh, on the fly, even on a day by day basis, and that goes into things like number of layers on on each realm. It's it's not a mm -hmm. one or the other thing. It's not necessarily the the case that we have to go from lots to one overnight. We have the ability to slowly tweak it and pull that in slowly on a day by day mm -hmm. or week by week basis. So you don't have this sort of uh, you know, one day you're experiencing the game this way and the next day it's completely different. We, we want to kind of make sure that it's a smooth transition. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, I got a follow-up question on the layering just real quick in terms of sure. the logic behind it and like how it works exactly. Um, so I noticed the other day during the last rest test, a couple of friends of mine logged in at the same time, but even if we logged in at the same time, we noticed all three of us were put on separate layers. Uh, the determining logic to determine which layer you're on, is it based on when you log in, when you create your character? Do you guys have any insight on exactly how it works and how it pairs you on a layer? Yeah. I mean, like, I don't want to go into too much detail, but basically it tries to pick a, a place where you will not cause additional load. So it tries to pick the place where if you log in, you're not going to make the servers o o overly burdened. So if you guys all logged in at the same time and you ended up on different layers, they were probably all about evenly balanced in terms of how, how burdened they were and in, in terms of stimulating your characters in the world. Mm. So then it was just kind of like, oh, well, th this one's the lowest right now. And then the next person logs in, this one's the lowest. And then this one's the lowest. And you guys all end up spread out. Mm -hmm. If you uh, were in different areas, it might have been different. If you were spread out throughout the world, it might have been different. If you staggered your logins, it might have been different. Mm -hmm. um, it's, yeah, it's trying to make sure that, like, since they're, they're there primarily to try to make sure the servers are stable at launch, we try to make mm -hmm. sure that we spread you out to, to distribute the, the load. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, speaking of uh, speaking of that, you uh, I, I think it was in the Reddit AMA. You guys mentioned how uh, if you had more characters, let's say the same amount of characters in a small area versus a larger area, it would put more load on the servers. Uh, does that mean that the different layers can have different numbers of people on them, or are the numbers like as a setting, like are all layers like the same, are all layers equal at the same time? Is kind of that what I'm asking, or is that something that's more dynamic between the layers? It's very dynamic. Okay. And so, I mean, like, it's not like, yeah. it's not, it's not like strict control. Like Omar was saying, like there's settings we can set and they're all kind of like guidelines for the server to try to make its best choice. And a lot of that is because we really want to make sure we don't transition you arbitrarily. Mm -hmm. So once you're on a layer, you're there and you're, you should only ever leave if somebody invites you to their group and they're on another layer, that should be the only thing that ever makes you transition to another layer. And, uh, and that means that it is kind of going to be dynamic. If a bunch of people all invite to them one layer, then as people are logging in, we'll fill in the one that's, that's not as, as, uh, uh, as overloaded, but yeah, like it, it can become uneven over time as people shift because of invites and whatnot. And then the server will try to like balance it out as people log in. Okay. But like, theoretically you could have, you know, Asmund Gold and Soda Pop and all of us invite everyone that we possibly can to one layer <laughs> and you would have a mega layer, right? And then <laughs> you, you as new people log in. Okay, as and, new people log in, it would try to populate the, the smaller layers. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And But you're right. If you literally all try to get onto one layer, eventually you will cause that circuit to lag so severely that it'll be unplayable. And so I hope nobody does that. Please don't. <laughs> okay. uh, I, I hope I'm not giving anybody like a nuclear weapon here. <laughs> um, but yeah, it will. the server will try to balance itself out, but it doesn't want to do it by splitting players. Uh, but yeah, that is one of the consequences of saying that we're going to put things on a a single layer per realm is that yeah players if they cluster just like it was back in yeah. 2004 and 6 right like uh that does cause the server to have to work harder and so we'll start to get laggy and so if you find yourself experiencing lag in an area oftentimes the best thing to do is try to find someplace else to play for a little while until that area kind of like spreads out a mm. little bit okay 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 um Something that uh, a lot of people, uh, uh, you know, just kind of looking around, getting involved in the community and seeing something that a lot of people were uh, asking about, I guess, over the last couple of days is 
uh, skeletons, right? And, and feeling that you're in a, a war-torn battlefield and in, in world PvP and this kind of thing. Can you guys explain how skeletons worked on the reference client? Like whenever you guys were, uh, I, I guess, so porting I, everything to classic or yeah, to classic. Yeah, I, I did kind of look into it, and and in one twelve, in our one twelve reference, we're matching the one twelve implementation in well, classic. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, so we, we feel pretty confident that, that we're matching at least the, the one twelve version of, of the skeleton functionality, but we do know that this is a, a very important topic and, and there's a lot of conversation. Uh, one of the things we're, that, uh, we're investigating is the history of changes, mm -hmm. uh, 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 like, because we, you know, we've seen the screenshots and, and we have the same memories, um, and, and we, we want to look at and, and understand the, the changes that occurred during the first original patch cycle mm -hmm. uh, because you know it was a dynamic game and, and they patch and, and change functionality uh, over over time you know during uh, the original's uh, lifespan so um, we, we want to make sure that we also understand sort of the genesis of, of those types of changes uh, because I, sorry, go I was gonna say, I have a different example that's similar. Uh, like where, so like uh, a lot of times we talk about the mount system and like oh, the right. mount system, if we were to look at like one twelve two, like yeah. the very last, the really like right before Burning Crusade, mm -hmm. the mount system changed and it was the one where you could, uh, it, it was expensive to get the training because the training types were like journeyman, mm -hmm. like uh, yeah. uh, expert riding. Mm -hmm. And that was because we were preparing for a world where you were going to eventually be able to buy like uh, flying. Uh, mounted flying kind of uh, right. thing. As, as we're like, okay, well, that doesn't really feel like it fits classic. And if we go back just a little bit to like one twelve one, we find like uh, I think it was one twelve one or one twelve zero, but it was yeah. one of the other one twelve patches where we said, oh, at this point, the mount system was the same way that it was for the entire history of 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 uh, of uh, of pre Burning Crusade Wrath of, uh, World of Warcraft. And so we're looking at this and going, okay, this is the right mount system this is the classic mount system mm -hmm. and that was the one that we wanted to do because it really made sense for that and it, it was it was the most authentic mm -hmm. classic feeling mount system and yeah. and it kind of like a, a different example but it's also similar is we found that in 112 there was a change to the way like friendly nameplates appeared oh, and yeah. yeah like we were just looking at this the other day and <laughs> like we thought just it was yesterday yeah literally just <laughs> yesterday we were talking about this bug and we thought we had to make a change because uh, someone was pointing out it affected the um what is it called the Aya uh, divinity quest chain benediction Bene yeah to get benediction and yeah. anathema uh, um. there's a quest where uh, because you have the eye of divinity, these uh, these these guys that are normally invisible can be seen by you. So basically, eye of divinity is giving you a see invisibility effect, oh. and these guys are invisible. And the code in one twelve <laughs> says, if it's invisible, you can't see a friendly nameplate. Not like whether it's visible to you, but if it is invisible, no friendly nameplate. And so we were about to put that back and take away friendly nameplates from anything that was invisible, whether you could see that thing or not, because that was how it worked in the reference client. And then we dug just a little bit deeper, and we said, wait a minute, that change happened literally in patch 112. All of, again, 1.1 through 1.11, you could see friendly nameplates on invisible units, and then they changed it in 112, and literally the very next patch, they changed it back. So it was like, oh, right. this is a blip on the radar. Yeah. This bug was yeah. active for one patch, and it happens to be the patch we're looking at. We're not going to reintroduce that bug. That's That was just something that made it really... Uh, almost, almost too yeah. difficult to do that quest mm -hmm. for no good reason. Yeah. Right. So just kind of sum up the the point is going back to the skeleton question. We we we're matching the one twelve, but we're still sort of investigating and looking into the history of changes. And once we have a, a little bit more inform more concrete information, mm -hmm. uh, we want to be able to talk about that. But for the moment, uh, we're we're keeping the functionality as mm -hmm. it is. Yeah, I guess That's it's awesome. also worth pointing out like. Like we're at the point where we're going to launch on Monday, yeah, and we're really excited about this product. We think it's in a really good state and it's ready to go. And we, we think this this product is fantastic, and oh, yeah. it really is an authentic recreation of uh, of World of Warcraft Classic as it was in that 2006 time frame. Uh, but we're not done. Like yeah. if we if we continue to find things that feel like they're not quite right, we're going to keep making little polish tweaks. Like, mm -hmm. That is something we are committed to doing, including like yeah. we're going to add the key ring in our, uh, in in our first patch. Our job is not done okay. on Monday, right? Yeah, <laughs> we still yeah. have a lot of work to do to make That's sure that we make. Hear the service yeah. and keep polishing um, it for anything that anybody else finds after launch there you go so you you mentioned you mentioned classic wow or vanilla wow authenticity at blizzcon ian mentioned add-ons and add-ons that might undermine the vanilla wow gameplay experience has that philosophy changed or where are you guys at with add-ons right now 
So sorry, uh, there was a little bit of a video cut out, but I think I heard you asking a question about our add-on philosophy and just generally how that works. Is that right? Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah, I, I feel like it's more or less the same that we are uh, we are based based on that modern code base, mm -hmm. which has more or less the modern add-on API. But at the same time, there are some things that we've added to it over time that weren't allowed in Classic, and uh, and we restricted some of those, in, especially in cases where it affected gameplay. So a really uh, good example of this is Caspar add-ons. Mm -hmm. Caspar add-ons that existed back in uh, in patch 112, uh, they could exist, but they were doing a lot of guesswork, and so they weren't super accurate. And so even though they give you a gameplay advantage, it wasn't as good a gameplay advantage as the Caspars that came later mm -hmm. and that are available in modern World of Warcraft. So we made sure we took back out that data, so you still have to kind of go back and kind of guess at that, and it's hard to write a Caspar add-on mm -hmm. again. So you can still write one if you want, like the the some of the hooks are there, but it's not going to be exactly as accurate as it used to be because that data didn't used to be available. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, there were things you could do in the classic uh, add-on uh, language that were um, basically like you could use it to essentially bot. There were basically no restrictions. It was a wide open field. Uh, and you could completely control any of your character's actions, automate them all. And we've never really felt like automating your character was uh, an appropriate use of the add-on system. And so we are keeping those restrictions that come with the modern code I, base. I, rem mm. I remember I was a uh, holy pally writing Molten Core, and uh -huh. the healing add-ons would just it would just put the right heal target right in the middle, <laughs> and I would just flash of light, flash <laughs> of light, flash <laughs> of light. We win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like if it's, so maybe yeah. If, if yeah, if your add-ons doing that for you, like, are you really playing a game at this point? <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, we want to make sure that it's still a fun and engaging experience for everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, another add-on that comes to mind is uh, decursive which uh, a lot of people have been using for right. years, right? The, oh. old, the old version of it. Um, so this is something that is is probably not going to work with the with the new API, or at least not the same way that it was written yeah, in the past. Yeah, that's correct. So we talk yeah. a lot about like the difficulty of the raids and some things being e like easier just because oh, of the sorry, nature of... Cutting oh. out. Okay. Hello? Wait, when you're good. Sorry, you I spent, we lost you there for a minute. Oh, no, you're good. I'm, I'm, my, I've been lost most of my life, so... Uh, <laughs> no, I couldn't hear the question. I'm sorry. The video cut out for a second. So, no, you're fine. Um... So what I was saying was talking about like how, how some of the raids might be easier, right? Just because of some of the the way the game's been designed, this and that. Uh, some add-ons that people are used to that people rely on pretty heavily, like a lot of healers use Decursive. Uh, in some ways, could you see the game being more difficult because of that, or, or kind of like Omar said, the healing uh, the healing add-on? Uh, I think I heard the question this time. It was uh, whether or not the game is more difficult because some of the the add-ons that people used to use won't be available, or whether it would be easier just because people have learned the mechanics. And I think it's it's really a balance between yeah. those two things. It's like because mm -hmm. now I got to learn Chromagus. Right, you got to actually <laughs> learn Chromagus. I, didn't, I, didn't know, <laughs> I don't know how Chromagus works because my job was to sit out of OS and be cursed. And I literally I had a wireless mouse uh -huh. one time, and I got thirsty, and I, I carried the wireless mouse <laughs> with me, just just clicking the button while I went down to the kitchen to grab a soda, <laughs> grab a drink, and came by. And raid leader oh, had man. no idea. Oh man. That reminds me of a story, a different story of uh, one of our guild members who was, this is like, uh, we were doing Molten Core, and you guys know that that the trash that you have to clear from, uh, like after Baron Geddon and Shazra, you have to clear through these flame packs all the way to uh, Sulphuron and mm -hmm. Golamag, and there's just like this whole, like a, like a, a gauntlet of all these flame packs, and uh, that guy, he didn't tell us until years later, like I literally learned this like last year, he was like, Oh yeah, every time we got to those, I would just put myself on auto follow and go take a shower. Yeah. And I was like, Are you kidding me? I was so angry. I was like, I can't believe you would like let us down for that. Like we were always struggling through those. And he was like, Yeah, I wasn't even there. <laughs> but but back to your question about uh add-ons, the uh yeah, like I feel like there will be like additional challenge for things like Chromagus, and at the same time, like people have learned so much, we can't put people's knowledge back yeah. in a lockbox. So people who have learned how these fights and strategies work will be able to share those solutions with mm -hmm. people who want to know about it. But at the same time, for anybody who hasn't done them, like you can try to like like shield yourself and like learn it on your own. I know one of the things that my guild liked to, used to like to do was we would try not to read the strategies that were posted online even back then. And we would try to figure it out on our own. A lot of times that was hard and uh, made it more of a challenge. So if you want it to be challenging, you can make it challenging for yourself. Awesome. And like because the game is so old or you know, it's coming back after a long break, um, a lot of people know all the mechanics now and it makes things easier. Um, but at the same time, like you said, the add-on API is a lot more modern now and people have the tools to make more sophisticated add-ons than they did back in the day. Possibly add-ons that trivialize things like in-game boss mechanics or even things like grouping up 
and being able to group up faster. For add-ons like this that maybe make the game a little bit too easy or do things that are not exactly maybe in the spirit of vanilla, do you guys have any kind of philosophy as to how to address these add-ons? Sorry, we, we lost the audio just at the very, the yeah, very but, end of that question. But it sounded like he was asking if we have philosophy about add-ons just in general, like which ones would be allowed. And I feel like the yeah. general philosophy is like, if it automates gameplay, we don't like it to automate mm -hmm. the gameplay for you. If it's helping you see the layout in a way that makes you feel like it's more comfortable for you to view and respond to, that's exactly why add-ons are in the game is to make sure that we can make like the interface more comfortable for you to read and respond to, especially for anybody mm -hmm. who like uses them to help with disabilities and things like that. That's that's something we're absolutely committed to. It's one of the reasons yeah. why we left in colorblind mode. Like mm -hmm. what kind of jerks would we be to take that out, right? <laughs> and so yeah, like we, we really want people to be able to, to see and experience and react to the game in a way that feels comfortable to them, but we don't want it to be played for them. So yeah, awesome. it's good to hear that, yeah. So something you touched on mounts a little bit earlier. Um, I, I'm sure you guys have heard a, a lot of the, the the feedback about people wanting unarmored mounts and this and that. What, what was the uh, what was the logic behind not introducing the unarmored mounts early in the game? Sure. Uh, again, you cut out a little bit, but I think the question was just about unarmored mounts and why we're deciding yeah. not to include them mm -hmm. and uh, how uh, passionate the community is about this. I actually have a good story that this just happened this week. Uh, our shipping and receiving department was sending me emails saying like oh yeah there's a package waiting yep. for you downstairs and i was like what do you mean there's a package waiting for you downstairs i don't order anything and i went down to pick it up and uh one of our fans and thank you so much if you're watching <laughs> uh sent me i couldn't believe it a bouquet of black roses yep. and uh True story and uh and a mask <laughs> that they had made out of like uh, uh, a, it was it was the ivory raptor head they had made yeah. an ivory raptor head mask and mailed it to me and I wish I had it with me. I yeah. would show it on camera. And, uh, and then they, a picture. they, yeah, they also made, they photoshopped a picture. I assume it's a picture of their character riding an ivory raptor. It's a troll with a thunder fury <laughs> and it has my head photoshopped onto it. It's hilarious. It has a note written on it. It's a very nice note. I'm, I was super thrilled. At the same time, we're not putting unarmored mounts into our WoW classic. And I'm so sorry. Uh, the reason we're not is because uh, we really felt like they were um, something that was kind of a surprise that we took away back then, that nobody was really like planning their life around like, I'm gonna definitely level and try to make this achievement. It was one of those things where uh, the original development team saw it as just kind of like a natural transition and they were trying to remove those and it didn't occur to them how like rare and special this would become once they were unavailable. And we, we really felt like if we put them in for a limited time in WoW Classic, it would un like, unreasonably incentivize people who want to be mount collectors to really push themselves to level fast and burn through the content faster than they would really feel comfortable doing. We, we talked to even like a lot of people yep. on our team who said, I want to take my time. I want to level slowly. I want to like bring my friend or my boyfriend or my girlfriend. I want to have them level alongside me. I want to introduce them to this game, show them this beautiful world and explore it slowly at their pace. But if the unarmored mounts are in for a limited time, then I'm going to abandon them. I'm going to push to the end. I'm going to burn myself out. And I'm going to get that thing. And I, I feel kind of bad that I'm going to do that. And we said that that feels bad to us, too. We don't want to put this thing in that that wasn't the way people played the game back then was to try to race to get the unarmored mounts. It was just kind of like, oh, I'm, I happen to be a fast level or I happen to have bought this mount and now I get to have it. And so we didn't want to make that like artificial race for people who really want to take their time. Yeah, I do mm -hmm. want to call out that uh, like part of the magic of that is is that it was sort of a happy accident. Yeah. Right. It was a happy accident that that happened that first time around. But what I'm really looking forward to is what are the happy accidents that are going to happen? Yeah. You know, with World of Warcraft Classic that we can't even foresee that that we might respond to in in a different way down the line. Like I'm really excited about. Well, what is what is this generation's version mm -hmm. of unarmored mount? Yeah, you know? that's a really like, good like point. Because because there is still a there's so much meta out there. There's so much emergent gameplay. There's so much that we that we can't predict because you guys are all just wonderful explorers uh and you know we'll, we'll play this game and, and who knows how you know what is going to turn out next like that's what i'm really excited for so if there's some next gen version of a happy accident uh we definitely want to support that as opposed to necessarily trying to recreate the the old happy accidents because they wouldn't be an accident if we did those again yeah right that's what you're saying it's so kind of like the corrupted blade like, and some 
Yeah, yeah, and yeah also like the talisman, the talisman binding shard, yeah, also probably. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, we're not we're not gonna do those exactly <laughs> because part of the magic is because they weren't planned; they were a surprise mm -hmm. to everyone. Right. So, like trying to recreate something completely unaware, like it was all kind of emergent and and accidental. And I'm actually very excited to what emergent experiences are gonna play out this time around, and that's mm -hmm. what we want to be hugely supportive of. Mm -hmm. Now I I don't mean to be rude, but uh, I I don't uh -oh. know I I don't know how how uh, true that story is about uh, somebody on the team uh, saying their their girlfriend they were playing with their girlfriend whenever they're playing oh. classic because I I don't know how you can play classic and have a girlfriend I mean I don't I, it's not, it seems a little bit far fetched to me. I played classic with my girlfriend she's my wife now how dare you <laughs> the time the time investment the time investment in both of them very impressive actually, I commend you I, have, I commend you I have yeah. a really like uh, positive memory of like even coming out of like uh, I was playing a Forsaken Warrior yeah. and she was playing a Forsaken uh, uh, Warlock and we were leveling up together even like from level 1 to 5 so we came out of Death Knell and into that like pumpkin patch that's like right outside right. and like I still have fond memories of we were like trying to like skate around those humans and like can we get yeah. out there and get that pumpkin i gotta apparently yeah. we need to poison that and kill some guys yeah. like that's <laughs> yeah. like that, that was yeah that's this is something that's still really kind of special to us yeah. that's awesome that's awesome no yeah I, I was mostly joking about the uh i was joking about like the time the no time no i know yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah i can for me personally i can barely take care of myself let alone uh, having somebody else to care about too <laughs> I understand. Yeah, that's, that's, sure. that's, that's a lot of hair to take care of. That's a lot of hair. Totally warranted and well understood. Yeah, Basic, sure. and I don't have to worry about that, you know? <laughs> true. Yeah, true. Mm -hmm, definitely. So, um, kind of speaking of uh, you, you, speaking of the team, right? Is mm -hmm. the team that you guys have, have come up with, uh, the, the team, the, the, the total team for the classic team, uh, how much of, how many of these people were maybe new hires or people that came from outside of WoW and how many people were actually uh, already working on WoW whenever you guys were putting the team together? It's so hard to say because, I mean, like, it's such a, like, a giant full team effort. Like, not mm -hmm. just the people who are, like, focusing on just WoW Classic, but, yeah. like, the, the World of Warcraft team in, t in its entirety has been supporting this. Like, we literally had somebody from our engine team helping us last night try to figure out an engine bug. We've had tools guys who have been working on all of our tools and build pipelines. So it's yeah. it's hard for me to say, like, that that there was any, like, you know, it is it is a big team effort. Mm -hmm. It is World of Warcraft is shipping World of Warcraft Classic. I mean, uh, it's really nice to be getting all this yeah. credit for it because we've been working on it exclusively, but it has been a team-wide project that has included both people who we've hired over the last two years and people like Omar and I who've been here for like 15 years or in your case, yeah. or 13 years in my case. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's, it's a mix of both, but yeah. I mean like everybody yeah. has been really passionate and yeah. excited and is a, a, a hardcore classic player who have, has been playing for a long yeah. time. A mix is the best answer we can really give to that. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. That's very cool. Um, so, so we, we talked a little bit about layering being removed in, in phase two. That's a, mm -hmm. it, that's, that's a hard commit at this point. It, it's not, it's not uh, a goal. It's, yeah. It's, and actually, let me correct you there. Before phase two. Oh, I don't know when phase before two. phase two. Yeah. I don't know okay. when before phase two. It might be the day before, but as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah. The goal is as soon as possible, and the commitment is before phase two. Yeah, that's okay. that's the aim. That's that's our heading. Yeah. There you go. Will layering be taken away from servers individually, or is it going to be a broad thing? Okay, layering is off every server now, or it will be a server by server. Again, it's one of those things where we have flexibility. We could do it server by server, but we're not planning to, mm. but we'll see how it goes. Like, I re like it really is, like I said before, it's a matter of, like, everybody's clustered in these starting yeah. zones. Mm -hmm. This is, like, this is going to be a very different game launch experience than we had in 2004. In 2004, when we did our midnight release, you had to drive to the store, you had to buy the <laughs> yeah, box, yeah. you had to get through checkout, you had to go home, you had to pull out the CDs, not even DVDs, they were CDs, <laughs> and install them one at a time, patch the game. So that naturally spread don't, the population don't out. Forget, don't discount that download. Oh, that's that right. That's, download. Yeah, the day one download. The download yeah. for that. Yeah. And so, just, yeah. just, just hope like your parents don't pick up the phone while you're trying to download. Oh, that's right, because you're probably exactly. on a modem. <laughs> yeah, because there were people... <laughs> so, so that was a thing back then. So yeah, that, like that would like spread out the number of people who were all jumping in at that moment. One, this time we're doing a global, simultaneous, worldwide release, and everybody's gonna have their finger over the enter world button, and it's gonna light up at the same minute worldwide, and they're all gonna hit it. So there's gonna be these huge crowds in these tight areas, and that's really what we're trying to like protect against. 
really, even in the first few hours as people spread out, we'll probably need fewer layers. Even in the first few days, we'll need fewer layers. I can't predict for sure when we'll be able to turn them off, but we are trying to do it mm -hmm. as soon as possible. Okay. Uh, and we'll be reducing them over time as we get to that point. So is there a situation, uh, or sorry, given that situation, excuse me, uh, something that's kind of come up a lot, and the example that people use is the uh, gate opening event, right? Sorry, we're losing sorry. the audio yeah. again. Uh -oh. Cutting out. Test, test, test. Da, 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 da. Okay. I heard you say da 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 da. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was the question. All the important parts, yeah. and we heard the da da da. You just wanted to sing to you. Yeah, beautiful that was, song you were singing. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I was just trying to serenade you guys. <laughs> no, uh, so uh, the. Do we do that back now? <laughs> <laughs> the the uh, the scenario that's come up quite often uh, is talking about the the opening of the gates. Right. This is going to be phase five. Oh God, yeah. Yep. Um, what is uh, what? What are the concerns? I guess what are what? If, how are you guys going to approach the situation of uh, essentially having you won't you won't realistically have every single person. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll have a lot of people. You'll have a lot of people there. Well, so yeah. Uh, yeah I mean, back back in the day, there were server crashes. I mean, what mm -hmm. what do you guys expect? So not layering. Yeah, I mean, not, we, we're, okay. again, we're not committed layering. not to do layering. Okay, not we, layering. We, we wow. talked That's about great. it, and okay. believe me, that was. That was a, a discussion we had, and it's a discussion we've had a couple times, and every time we've come back to, no, we really can't do layering. We can't do sharding. We don't want to do either of those solutions for this. We really want there to be one version of the event. Mm -hmm. And so how we're going to survive that, we're going to keep working on it, but yeah. part of the fun in, is, is that lag, and so maybe we could just survive in a laggy state. Like There's so many people, it actually kind of makes things slow and chug a little bit, and we're going to try to make it so that it's not too bad. And we're yeah. going to work on it as best we can. We, yeah, we don't know what we're definitely going to do. Right. We do know what we're not going to do. But yeah, there's that kind of epic feeling of everybody's there. And we want to make sure that we support that. And we'll try to make sure that we can make that as good an experience as we can. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, obviously that event is a little bit down the line. I think AQ is phase yeah. five. Yeah, we, so we do have some time. <laughs> yeah, we, we have that benefit. Yeah. We don't yeah. have to answer it right now. Mm -hmm. Have you guys given some thought as to how long you guys are going to want your phases? Is there a certain criteria you're looking for before you make that decision if you haven't made it already? We definitely haven't made it already. Uh, and I know that there's not like a like we've talked about this earlier in the uh, is that we don't have a specific time frame in mind. We have kind of like rough estimates, but they're really vague and there's no specific criteria. <laughs> we really want to watch players behavior. We want to see what's going on. And we're not even really sure what we're looking for specifically mm -hmm. but uh i don't know i guess i could say like it's probably not going to be any slower than it was originally but okay. probably like that's about the best we can yeah, say yeah like, like okay. everything else we, we we want the community to to be part of this decision making like yeah. the whole reason we have six instead of four right was directly because of feedback and you know we don't want to mm -hmm. we like we're not done in in terms of uh uh responding to player feedback yeah uh, you know, just we we have some vague thoughts on the matter. We but you know, it, it's so soft at the moment. We don't even uh, want to talk about it because at its core, it's going to be community driven. Yeah, we really so, want to hear what you guys say. Like if everybody's telling us like let's do it now, and it's like a, a whole big chant. Like <laughs> we want to hear that. If everybody's saying yeah. like no, no, wait, give me more time, we want to hear that too. So speaking uh -huh. of layering, you're obviously doing a global classic launch um, with each new layer. Will it be a global layer launch, or will NA get it Tuesday and EU gets it Wednesday? How are you gonna How are you gonna release? Sorry, the did you mean phase? Uh, sorry, not layers. Phase. I apologize. Launch, like I apologize. Phase? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my, my bad. Uh, we th We think right now that those will be global launches. I think that's what we've been planning for. But okay. uh, But again, like uh, I think we have flexibility, so we didn't have to do it that way. But yeah, I I don't think we have a concrete, definite answer. Yeah. Uh, we would we would definitely do it on all realms within a region at the same time. Like we wouldn't have phase one open for for Harad and not Etiash, for example. Right, that's a like good point. It would, yeah, it would it, it it would definitely be at the same time within one region. Um, mm -hmm. That like that's for certain. Okay. You guys okay. mentioned feedback. Okay. You guys mentioned feedback about the phases. Mm -hmm. There, There is one request, and I hope I'm not out of line here, but there is one request I'd like to make. I've seen a lot of people in the community talk about it. By the time we get to phase five with AQ, uh, specifically Kathun, he was known to be, I think, the longest or one of the longest bosses in the history of WoW that didn't go down, and that's because of a very famous bug. Um, and actually, Ian has a coast us, wrote a big post on the Elitist Drix forum saying how this, you know, Kathun was mathematically impossible. 
would it be possible just for fun, just maybe for the first week or two to get a pre nerf Cthulhu just to see if we could do it now? Is, is it possible? Uh, I, that is not on our plans right now. We are planning to have all the systems in the 112 state, including the bosses and abilities. And that would, that ought to make them killable and prevent those kind of like mathematically unkillable situations. Uh, I understand what you're asking. And yeah, that's not the plan right now. If mm -hmm. you want to, I'm just, I'm just spitballing here. Uh, if you want to, try to do it uh with no helmets and no shoulders equipped <laughs> or do, the challenge. do something well all right the omar know, challenge to... <laughs> <laughs> exactly like like if you want to be like world first no enchants half geared equipped right to take down Cthulhu. like everybody barefoot like <laughs> full troll yeah aid. you got you got no like step, step and all that like like when i think about like emerging gameplay and just kind of that fun creator like that that one's just off the top of my head but you know we'd love to see that kind of stuff come out from the community yeah yeah uh, for sure uh so you know we're, we're, we're kind of getting to uh we're we're, we're we're about to run out of time here so uh, I, I do want to uh, ask this question. I, I think it was the uh, it was a event that John Height was at in China, where he, where he was kind of talking. This was this was a, a few weeks back, uh, where he was talking about not being sure necessarily what what the plans are for. Sorry, we're, uh oh, we're we're losing audio, but I think I, I, okay. I heard the lead in. Keep yeah. Going. Okay. So so not being sure what the plans are for after classic. Uh, quote ends or like a, a cycle of classic ends uh what are your guys thoughts so far on the concept of fresh servers or having a, a new set of maybe burning crusade open up or even like a classic plus i love all those ideas i think you guys <laughs> have great ideas i think they're all fantastic uh, we don't have any plans to announce today. Uh, right, our, right. our focus really is on making sure that we get classic authentic because we know that that's something that has been clearly communicated by so many of our fans for so long that we want to make sure we deliver on that product first. And awesome. then awesome. as with all the yeah. other things we talked about, like uh, like the content phases and uh, and the community demand for servers, we want to hear what the community says. Do you, is, what do you guys want to see next? Like, I, yeah. I'm, I'm curious. What yeah, do you guys you, what, you do tell you, us? Do you guys yeah. each have your own opinion on which TBC. one you would like? TBC. Yeah. All of, them. You... all of them. Why not? All of them. All of them, man. Uh, Tomorrow. I, I, <laughs> I, I think uh, from my perspective, um, I, I do think you guys are probably going to have to put out fresh servers uh, because uh -huh. that, that is something that people are always going to want to play vanilla, uh -huh. right? People oh, I are, see what you mean. Yeah. yeah, people are always going to want to do that. There's some people that want to play patch 1.12, patch or phase six in this case, forever, right? I, I know Swifty, for one, has talked about that before, how he didn't even want to go to Burning Crusade. And uh, I think the concept of forced progression can uh, be kind of bad for, for some people, for some players. Uh, I think if Burning Crusade happens, it should probably happen on a, on a separate server. And then maybe you get the character copy over as opposed to starting fresh from level one completely on a mm -hmm. separate server. And I think that Burning Crusade should probably be a priority over Classic Plus, even though Classic Plus, I think, could be a really, really awesome thing if Burning Crusade is already available. Yeah, I, I really agree with you. Those are all great ideas. And mm -hmm. we, definitely, we want to hear more of those. And I really appreciate you giving those those. And, mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, like we're, we're talking about all kinds of things internally, too. Those ideas and more. And we don't have any plans to share, but I really am really excited that everybody else has all these plans and ideas that they want to share with us so we can keep talking about them. There you go. So you guys heard him. Community feedback. Let's see what the community wants. And, and, <laughs> yeah, believe it or not, yeah, we really yeah. do read it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I have to say, like, it's very apparent that you guys do listen to feedback. Mm -hmm. You guys are very oh, communicative yeah. and open about it. So I, I, I appreciate that a lot. Yeah, Thank you very absolutely. much. We, we've tried really hard to. I mean, it, and it is a challenge because, of course, we have uh, the work to actually like build the game, too, to keep on top of it. We have an excellent community team who helps yeah. loop, us in, loop us in on those things and set up things like this. So a really big shout out to them for helping us out with all that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Have you guys seen any of the Omar memes? And if so, what's your favorite one? <laughs> they, <a> cave. <laughs> they are, they are po a few of them are actually posted up around here. <laughs> it's so true. My favorite one, my favorite one is absolutely the uh the one of him as Iron Man, like he built classic in a cave. And, like, that one, I love that one so much because like it's it's like it's got that grain of truth. From the prototype, <laughs> yeah. What it was like, yeah. Go, go in the cave, make us a classic, like right yeah. now. Like, okay, <laughs> this one kind of works. <laughs> like, I kind of clued something together. <laughs> Does this? <one? laughs> so yeah, I, that was that was absolutely hands down my favorite. 
Yeah. Do you have a favorite one too, Omar? Uh, I'm I'm a big I'm a big fan of uh, Iron Man and, and uh, Robert Downey Jr. and and uh, yeah, so that, like those actually speak to me. <laughs> yeah, uh, personally. So so uh, yeah, seeing those were just absolutely fantastic. So thank you everyone, and and thank you Brian. Like like yeah, no uh, yeah even uh, like uh, you were talking about the the fan letter that they they sent you guys. I mean, we we love the. Um, sort of that community created content mm -hmm. uh we're big fans of it uh you know we'd love to see all of our players engage uh with with not just in game but also out of game as as well you know we get a big kick out of that and we encourage that absolutely yeah i, I definitely think you guys uh being more open with the community and and that, that's one thing you guys have done so well with classic that i, I think a lot of people can really appreciate is uh, kind of like the feeling of old Blizzard, you know, all this stuff and, and seeing how uh, open you guys are, constant feedback. I mean, we, we had that big drought, right? Right at the beginning, right after the announcement. But in hindsight, it's one of those things that it's fair because you guys had no idea what you were doing at that point, really. I mean, you had, a, you had a very vague direction, but you didn't have the whole team together. You were just like, hey, we know we're doing it, right? And yeah, then right. yeah. once, after pretty much after we got that first piece of news, after that, it just kind of slowly, it just got... A little bit, like a little bit less time, a little bit less time, a little bit less time, and it, it's it's been really, really awesome. And uh, I think a lot of people are really, really appreciative of that, for sure. I'm, I'm glad you said that. I mean, yeah. like that's that's one of the things we talked about was trying to make sure that we could communicate as much as possible. And you're right, like in those early days, like we didn't have much to say. Yeah. And so it was and like, it yeah, was like, a little tricky at first, but <laughs> right, yeah, like we okay, well, we're starting this out. Let's get going. And then yeah, once we once we had a direction and we had things to say, we really did want to like make sure that we included everybody, including like like we said like. This was a, a project that was built out of community passion and community sentiment, community demand for this. So we really wanted to make sure that uh, we were including the community all the way uh, and make sure that we, we got your input and your feedback mm -hmm. and uh, shared your memories. <laughs> Uh, both, uh, you know, the, yeah. the, the true memories and the faulty <laughs> ones, like we have our own too. Yeah. Like <laughs> I was talking earlier today oh, about, big, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, I have a, a, a strong memory of the sons of Aragal in silver pine forest. Oh. I guess I've already mentioned I was a forsaken warrior back in the day. And, uh, and so when we got to silver pine forest, those sons of Aragal were just so scary that my memory of them was that they were these enormous creatures that would like <laughs> fill the entire screen. And then we went back and checked and like they're normal sized werewolves. They're like the same size as the other ones they just you know have a higher level and will just tear you to shreds but my memory of that fear like blew them up in my mind so it's so good that we have the yeah. original data the original source code to be able to go back and so we don't have to trust our memories we can actually verify that these things are true huh? awesome so uh, I, I think we're uh, I don't want to keep you guys too long I know you guys uh, you guys have meetings and all kinds of stuff planned yeah we like we do. Yeah. We have a lot to do to prepare yeah. for launch on Monday. Again, thank you so much for joining us. We're we're so thankful. I, this was uh, at the last second. This got figured out, and and we're all. I mean, I, everybody's really really appreciative you guys being here for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. If I could ask one more real quick question, what are you guys playing in Classic WoW? Oh, good question. Sorry, the audio cut out again. But yes, what, go ahead and answer and ask that. What question faction? Again. What class? What race are you guys playing going into Classic WoW? What faction oh, and race? Faction. Yeah, actually, that's a good question. Yeah. Like, uh, I have always been, for the last 15 years, I have been for the Horde. I've played Hell that yeah. same Forsaken character. Actually, I switched to Death Knight and the Wrath of the Lich King and played that continuously since then. But I'm switching sides. I have never experienced any of the Alliance content, so there's a whole new world to explore there. I'm going to go Alliance this time. I'm probably going to make a Dwarf Hunter. There's a whole new world to explore just in okay. Hunter abilities and like pet management. I didn't know before. Can you guys believe this? Before this project, before I was working on this project, I did not realize that pet loyalty and pet happiness were in fact two distinct things. I thought all of my Hunter guildmates oh, were yeah. talking about the same thing with different words. And I was like, what are you guys all talking about? <laughs> I, I learned that they're different. And now I want to explore that whole world too and discover that. Oh, uh, sure. I'm a traitor. Yeah, I'm a traitor myself. I played a, a raiding holy paladin, uh, and uh, so I'm going to be switching sides as well. Uh, yeah. I uh, yeah, I'm going to be going. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be going shaman. I haven't decided yeah. whether I'm going wow. orc or torn yet. Oh, um, orc, orc. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but but here's a here's the thing. I'm planning to do a lot of PvPing because oh. that's, that's a section of the game. Like I didn't PvP very much the first time around, so I want to go complete 180 with the whole. Like new faction, yeah. new class, new new area of the game. So yeah, yeah you know, I'm gonna be out there uh, wind furying it up. That's awesome. <laughs> War Chief Omar, dude. Look, Rank 14 <laughs> Omar. 
I love it. Is, I this hope a, it. is this the birth of a new meme? I hope so. I want to see those. I want to see those on Reddit. I want to see War Chief Omar. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah for sure that's uh, that's awesome to hear um that's it's cool to see like you know even even for you guys yeah can you guys still now? there yeah yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're sure can you guys oh, hear i us? can see them smile oh they see there. smiles but yeah. yeah here you go test 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 hello test i hear okay, you now you test. all right very good can we sing again uh, <laughs> let it go <laughs> 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 so, yeah. uh, all right, great. Yeah, we'll, we'll let you guys go. We, we, I know we've kept you over time. Uh, again, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll split off and, and we'll kind of we'll debrief a little bit. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll keep the cast going with us three. Uh, again, thank you guys so much. Uh, a, a huge, huge, uh, huge thanks from from us, and I'm sure every, a lot of people in the community are really excited about having you guys here too. Like I said earlier, so. Yeah. Awesome. The, the final thank you. I want to thank the, this this positive feedback cycle. You know, thank you guys. We love all of our fans. We want to hear from you. We want to respond. We want to hear back, and we just want to keep this going. So thank you guys so much for your time and efforts and energy. We really appreciate it. Yeah, I can't say that any better. Thank you guys so much for inviting us to be on. For sure. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for coming on, guys. Thank you. Take care. Awesome. Thank you guys. Peace. Let's do this real quick. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, uh, that work okay give me one second let's switch this over nice all right sweet we're still live right yeah yeah we're still going we're still going it's not over we're yet still, okay, okay. <laughs> hi chat how was it chat dude that was awesome that was so that, sick dude can, that was great can we can we get some some bonus hearts can we get some bonus hearts in the chat for uh for for brian and omar coming on with us that was awesome let me let me yeah. fix this right quick. Dude, yeah, man, we, I, w I was we were talking out, about dude. you're mm -hmm. tripping out. Yeah, dude, that was exciting. Like I we could, were talking yeah. about their communication with the community and stuff like that. Like this is not something they had to do, right? They came on to hear it. Like you know, this this is this is badass. Mm -hmm. You know, for sure. Here, one second. I'm gonna go full screen for just a second while I transition this. Uh, no one second. Boom. I'll do this. Um, give me one second here. Mm -mm -mm, full screen. Uh, let me do Firehead. Is Firehead here? Yeah, I saw him in the chat. Uh, Firehead, I just sent you a friend request. Can you do this for me? Accept the friend request, join the call, and uh, just mute, and then we'll, we'll uh, do that. As a fan, you probably want to check the screen just real quick, maybe hide anything. Uh oh. There you go. That's good. Okay, my bad. <clears throat> is this good? Yeah, it's fine. It's no big deal. Um, okay, very good. Go ahead and add. Sweet. Dude, I'm loving the Loktar Omars in the chat right now. Dude, unbelievable. Well, it's so cool because you can tell what those two guys especially like it's not just a job for them right like they're super crazy passionate about working on the project i mean omar it was he like made it happen right and then brian has helped like dude they're they're so passionate like they you can tell they love classic they love vanilla yeah so. dude a firehead fire firehead's face looks like a four weird <laughs> in that <laughs> picture dude it looks like a four weird <laughs> <laughs> that's great okay so uh so yeah um no uh, that, that was really really awesome so let's let's do some takeaways right let's let's have some takeaways from what happened uh one one thing that comes to mind layering pretty much a hard commit of before phase two right before phase two they're going to get rid of it that's awesome could, to hear could be the day or could be the day before, before <laughs> could, two, could be yeah. literally hey we're going to get rid of it and then servers go down for the patch <laughs> but mm -hmm. they uh, want to get rid of it as soon as possible mm -hmm. like that's the sentiment that i think is important and the interesting thing about it is the way they know they're going to get rid of it is because they plan on releasing more servers. So, like, mm -hmm. I think what's going to happen is they will basically release just servers progressively as time goes on. And, like, I'm guessing there's probably a threshold that they're looking for. The second they hit that threshold, boom, they take off layering. And uh, I'd say sooner rather than later is probably their goal. Well, it sounds yeah. like here's like you're right. Like this is how phase one works into phase two. Some mm -hmm. players will stop playing. Classic WoW will not be for everyone. Players will start playing at different times throughout the day. Some people can play in the morning, in the evening, in the afternoon. Like, you know, because with, with the classic launch, 
it's sort of a unique problem because everyone's taking a week off work or two weeks off work mm -hmm. or quitting their job or getting a divorce to play classic WoW full time, right? But at a certain point, you have to go back to the real world and live your life. And so people will play at different times throughout the day. So some people will stop playing. Some people will play throughout the day. Um, they'll add new servers with probably character transfers, free character transfers <laughs> to the new servers. Um, and then they're going to get rid of layering. I, I really hope it works out like that because uh, like, like, and they know this, you cannot have layering during phase two. Mm -hmm. and, and it's because of certain events, right? I mean, w world bosses, you can't have more than one Kazakh spawn. You can't have more than one Azure ghost spawn because then you can layer hop. That's, act that's like a really good example of what would be potential layer abuse, but it's not going to be able to happen because there's no layering at that point. Uh, kind of moving on forward to the, to the AQ40 gate opening, you're going to have multiple gongs if they had layering. Right, so that's that's something else that they can't have layering for AQ40. That's why they, they made a hard commit for they're not going to turn layering back on at any point for um, for the AQ40 event. So really good to hear. Again, um, they they mentioned something about how they're currently looking at releasing the patches, the different phases globally at the same time. Right. So this mm -hmm. is something they that said, they said at least regionally, and I'll tell you like real at quick. At least regionally. Here's, yeah. the reason, here's the reason why I asked the question for people that are concerned and this is not really my concern but for people that are concerned about world first nefarian or world first yep. Cthune, if na gets it a day ahead of eu na is going to get it every time and you know no like no one wants that mm -hmm. we want we want global or right? i think global is the best option probably but then you have problems with lockouts and when American it's going reset and there's it's a it's a hard problem to solve and this is obviously problems they're having with the world first bfa mythic race and stuff like that it's mm -hmm. a hard problem to solve well, I mean, let's be honest. I, I think they actually should have it like that where NA can get it a day early because then at least we could win something because EU's been <laughs> kicking our butts for a long time when it comes to, when it comes to World First. So, uh, yeah, it would be nice. No, I, all joking aside, uh, one of the takeaways I had from it was that how, how this could affect retail, right? Maybe if it's something they're looking at for classic, it might be something that they're looking at for retail as well. Maybe uh, maybe starting to do like global patches or stuff uh, or whatever at the same time, having the, have the patches launch globally there as well, um, which I thought was interesting. For me, the yeah. biggest takeaway was uh, they did not. I mean, they said they're up for anything after classic, like classic plus TBC. I mean, we always kind of assumed they would do TBC and I think we will get TBC. It's it more or less, I don't want to say confirmed, but I think it's very likely we get TBC. But they didn't seem against the idea of Classic Plus, and that was something we thought they probably wouldn't pursue just because it's resource heavy. But I think at this point, they've seen the response to Classic from the community. They've seen how high people are about it. I think they're willing to support the project standalone beyond just Classic if they want to. So mm -hmm. if they do that, that'd be very exciting. Well, I think a lot of it, I think a lot of it depends on how this whole thing plays out. Like what's the population going to be like uh, in two years from now? Uh, they, they said they don't have an exact timeline. They don't think it's going to be slower. They don't think it's going to be slower than it was back in the day. Back in the day, it was like 24 and a half months. You know what I think would be probably ideal is if you're doing it at about 20, 21 months. If you're doing it at about that time, then you have Burning Crusade launch at the beginning of the summer as opposed to the end of the summer which could be good for more people playing who are maybe in college or they're, they're in school, whatever, right? They, they have less stuff going on during the summer. They want to stay Absolutely. inside because it's hot. So that could be something that, that would work out. It would be a faster timeline. It would be a faster timeline than uh, what originally happened. But I, I think given the way that they're approaching the game, I don't think it would be too far-fetched to, to make it a few months faster. Um, yeah. Here, here's my only concern with the rate at which they release phases is... I hope they release phases when it makes sense and when it's appropriate and not when it lines up best with a BFA patch or another Blizzard game release. I hope they release it with what's best for Classic WoW and Classic WoW's lifespan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some people in the chat are asking, what is Classic Plus? Essentially, it's developing post nax content once nax is done or any kind of extra content for Classic down the line. Obviously, you would still preserve the Classic servers. Like, you'd keep, like you know, pristine, classic, no changes servers, but then maybe you release a couple of servers also additionally where you could copy your character over mm -hmm. and do that extra content. Things like the Dragon Isles, I see people in chat saying, things like Ashara Crater, things that were never finished in classic or possibly completely brand new content that we've never seen before. So the, the takeaway that I had today was they did not reject that idea at all. In fact, they embraced it. They said, we're, we're down to do any of the suggestions that the mm -hmm. community has said so far. If the community demands it, then they're open to it, which was mm -hmm. 
like that shocked me when they said that. Yeah, I was I was I was a little bit surprised by that too. Uh, but it, it's cool. I mean, it's they're 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 very uh, they're being very open about it, right? Uh, keeping mm -hmm. an open mind and also being pretty transparent with the community, at least as much as they can be. So I, I like I said before, I I kept it as like abrupt as I could. I, I really think Burning Crusade should be a priority over uh, over classic plus like make sure that that's done and that's mm -hmm. taken care of one i, I think it's a layup it, it's going to be so easy to do um classic plus is going to take a lot more development i think and, and a lot more thought well then again they don't have to have the whole thing done at once they could just have you know phase seven right what, whatever the next phase is ready to go so so really only has to be one phase at a time but um i, I do think that uh, I, I do think that burning crusade is essentially going to be easier and it's going to be a freebie uh a I lot of people you're right like Sorry, sorry, go ahead. I, I, I think that a fresh classic and TBC both are like definite. These two things have to happen, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And the classic plus is like a hard maybe. And who knows? Maybe maybe classic plus won't happen with the first iteration of classic. It'll mm -hmm. be this. It'll be with with classic fresh. You'll have you'll have phase seven or something, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I, I mentioned like force progression, right? I think they need to have character copies to whatever Burning Crusade server would open up because there's people who just want to play on that one classic server forever. They just are going to want to play Phase 6 forever, farm Phase 6, all that stuff. And there's going to be so many people playing on these servers. Uh, I think people are worried about, oh, well, isn't this going to split up the community if they do all of them? And I think it might, but you really have to see how it all plays out in, in two years from now. If there's still a lot of people playing, you don't need to have 50,000 people on a server for it to be healthy. I mean, well, you, you look back at the original population caps, it was somewhere between 25 and 3,000, 2,500, 3,000. Dude, you're super right. So for classic WoW to be a success or to, to, to feel like you're having fun, like it's an actual classic realm, you only need one healthy pop and realm. You don't, because, you know, there's cross realm BGs, but vanilla realms are so insular. All you really mm -hmm. need is your own realm to be fun and happy. And that's, from your point of view, it's, it's all good. But like a big unknown is we don't know how many people would want classic TBC that have heard about classic vanilla and they're like, ah, I don't care about vanilla. I'm just right. going to hope for TBC. We don't like, there could be, you know, there could be 10 billion people, dude, that mm -hmm. want to play classic TBC, but don't care at all about vanilla. Right. It's, we just have no idea. Yeah. I mean, more people played Burning Crusade than played vanilla and more people played Wrath than played Burning Crusade. How is it going to be approached if, if it comes out again? Like who knows? But the, that's typically like the three people talk about whenever they talk about going and releasing the expansions again, it's kind of like the original trilogy because for a lot of people, uh, the end of Wrath was kind of like the hard cutoff point for like going from Wrath to Cataclysm of when the game changed a lot, right? Literally, like the world changed, a lot of the systems changed. Uh, I personally think that a lot of that stuff changed in Wrath, and that was kind of like the beginning of the end, so to speak. But um, I mean, I, I think that having those three expansions, or like classic Burning Crusade, Wrath, I always call, I always, whenever I say expansions, I always consider classic an expansion whenever I'm talking about it. But those three versions of the game, uh, those would be that, that. Those would be what they would do with classic. I would think. Dude, listen, they scrap all the expansions. They release classic. It's a success. They just make WoW two, and then that's it. WoW two designed with the same philosophies as classic, but brand new content all the <laughs> just, way. Expansion after expansion, and they just do it, dude. I just I don't think they'll do it. Like it's it's too making a new MMO altogether. Like a WoW two would basically end WoW, right? WoW 2 would end WoW, and then a WoW 2, it, it, it's just so much of a, it's so much of an investment to make a new MMO. I don't think they would do it. Um, Let but us dream. Wouldn't, I mean, wouldn't that kind of be what Classic Plus is, in that essence, right? That would kind of be what Classic Plus is. Yeah, kind of. Dude, you know, you know like, this is sort of a weird on-topic but off-topic funny story. When Classic was announced, you know, almost two years ago now, I was, like, almost in denial. Because they had said it was never going to happen, never going to happen. You think you do, but you don't. For the first like two weeks, I was like, oh, classic WoW. Like, dude, this is just going to be a Caverns of Time dungeon. You're going to go in, you're going to kill Hogger, Ragnaros, Kel'Thuzad, get some free epic loot, and then it's over. That's classic WoW. Here we are. What are we, four days away? <laughs> it's actually happening. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Dude. <sighs> Real quick, okay. That's hilarious. We have oh to we have God. to address this. We have to address this situation, guys. This is something that is, uh, this is something that's very serious. This is, a, this is kind of a serious problem that we have here. Um, it's beautiful. It's amazing. Are you kidding me? You guys think you guys think it's bad enough? Okay, you would think that it's bad enough that Kevin Jordan, a former Paladin player is re-rolling Orc Shaman. 
But Omar, a former Paladin player, is also re-rolling Orc Shaman. Do you, like, do you guys understand the amount of emotional distress this puts me in? This is absolutely unbelievable. I can't even look at the, please take it off, man. I, I can't. Hey, that was a horrid, disgusting. dude. Unbelievable. Disgusting. <laughs> Hashtag that's my war chief right there. <laughs> so, no, that is, uh, I think it's cool, right? That e even the people who made the games, right? E even the people who, who have been making the game, been working on the game and doing it for that many years are finding new ways to enjoy the game. Right? I, I, I meme and stuff a lot. Um, about a lot you of know things. What? But yeah, that's, that's, uh, I think that's really cool. They're finding new ways to enjoy it. Go ahead. You know what, man? Not only are Omar and the rest of the boys, you know, they've made Classic WoW. They've been working on it for over two years now. Their final mm -hmm. sacrifice is not taking time off work for launch. They're going to be they're going to be at work, True. bug fixing, making sure everything goes well during launch. It's their final sacrifice for us. True. The final sacrifice. Very, very true. <laughs> Imagine, imagine if somebody on the classic team quits their job like right after lunch. So yeah. <laughs> I'm out. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> no, I think uh, I think that'd be a uh, that'd be a good idea. Oh, geez, yo, Ian, I'm really sick today, dude. <laughs> I can't come into work. It's really bad. <laughs> oh man, yeah, that'd be that'd be great. I wonder, man, man, I couldn't imagine. You should imagine somebody going in and, and, and doing that. Be like, come on, dude, we know what you're doing. You know what they said? They said like for for like a server launch. Uh, I wish we could have talked about this a little bit, but not for a server launch. But like an expansion launch, there there's like a war room, right? There's a war room where it's like all hands on deck, everybody's ready to go, and it's like they got every freaking button and lever to press to make sure the state servers are staying online. It's almost like they're they have a boat. They they have a boat with a bunch of holes in it, and they're just trying to plug it with every one of their fingers. And I kind of I kind of want to know if that's what they were planning on doing with Classic too. With classic launch, if it's just going to be like the same sort of procedure that they would normally do for a uh, for an expansion launch. Yeah, I wonder. I mean, I wonder like, what am I trying to ask? I wonder if they expect more trouble with the classic launch than a than a retail expansion launch. I wonder like if they expect it'll go more smoothly or I, I, it's gonna be interesting. Mm -hmm. You gotta think. You gotta think there'll be more people coming back for a classic launch i think than than an expansion launch because a classic launch captures not just the current audience mm -hmm. but it captures everybody that quit already so you got to expect that classic launch is going to be bigger than any expansion launch ever i think mhm mm uh yeah I, I totally agree i think uh i think this is a game that over the years it's it's affected so many people right it's affected people's lives it's affected people's uh kind of like their gaming careers a lot of people got into online games through Warcraft or through WoW. And uh, you even look at a lot of the bigger streamers. I mean, you look at, like, you know, Shroud, Tim, Lyric, uh, Summit. The, the list goes on, right? A lot of guys who are not in the WoW section, uh, they they played WoW at a very young age, just like everybody else, right? Like a lot, of, a lot of you guys here, maybe a lot of you guys in chat right now, you guys played WoW, you loved WoW, it was a huge part of your life, but over the years, you kind of lost it. You weren't as interested in WoW because it wasn't really the same game that you were used to playing. And so many people are, they, they just want a chance to go back and, and we're finally going to get that here in about four days. So, um, which again, it's, dude, it's crazy that they came on so close to launch. I, yeah. I think, yeah, like that's, they, they're probably packed. They said they had meetings all day and that's why they, they, they could only stay for like an hour. So like the fact that they, they managed to fit us in, that's insane. Cause that was, uh, as far as I know, they've, they've never done a podcast or anything like that before as far as like Blizzard devs go. They haven't. No, uh, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, no, I mean, it's really cool. It, it it's it speaks to how forward and open they've been with the community, right? Because they did the AMA what two days ago or yesterday. They're here today. Like, hey, they listen. They talk, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's been it's been really really good, guys. Uh, by the way, if you haven't yet, uh, make sure to go follow Stay Safe and make sure to go follow Tips. Uh, their their handles are right there. In those places, uh, right under their names, Stay Safe TV, Tips Out Baby on uh, on Twitch, YouTube, same name, and then Stay Safe Warlock and Tips Out Baby on Twitter as well. So you guys make sure to go do that if you guys haven't done that already. Um, and pretty soon, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do we're gonna do some Q and A. Uh, if you guys have any questions, things that maybe you want us to talk about that was brought up uh, whenever we we're talking to them, or just any other questions in general, uh, you guys can tweet at us. Just you know at whatever, put hashtag ClassicCast. I'm going to search for hashtag ClassicCast on Twitter and uh, we'll, we'll do a little bit of Q&A through that. So, um, yeah. yeah While so we we'll uh, build up some questions, 
you guys are going to Vegas here pretty soon for the method thing, right? Yes, that's right. There is going to be a method launch event. There's going to be a method uh, classic launch event. It's called the. Uh, it's what is it? The actual is the official name. Race to World First. I, I think it's officially called the Race to World First, but it's really a lot of different things going on. And I know, like S yeah. fan, you've got I, your I, whole show thing that you're doing, and it's, it's going to be a little different. I think. I sure as crap, I'm not going for World First. I'll tell you that. Same, much. dude. Yeah. Same. Dude. I've never, I've never speed leveled, so this is going to be, this is going to be a, a newer experience for me, right? And I, 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 I think, dude, I'm going to be honest. I don't think I'm going to hit 60 before the end of the, uh, before the end of the event. Well, how That's, long is it? Eight or nine days, right? Yeah, I mean, we'll see what okay. happens. I mean, uh -huh. I, I think it'll be good for me uh, initially. Like, I wasn't so sure if I even wanted to go, but uh, going, I, I think it's going to be good for me because typically, whenever I, I like, I leave the house, I'm at an event, I'm at the hotel. Like, I'm more like, uh, I'm, I'm like Energizer Bunny a little bit. Like, I, I can go. But whenever I'm home, like, I might like get kind of in my comfort zone. I'm hanging around. It, it's oh, it's a little yeah. bit like going to like like it's a little bit like sports, like going to an away game or something. You know that kind of mentality. No, you're you're totally right. Like, I mean, I, guys, I'm staying home. I'm with my dog. I'm, you know, I'm. I can sleep in my bed. I have the shampoo I use. Like, you know, all of these little tiny conveniences and things that you know and expect every day in your own home. Take those away. It, you know, it, it does sort of tilt you off. Not tilt, but sort of throw your gameplay off or throw you out of the vibe. So, like these guys that go to World First Races, like the Method guys or Limit guys, when they're pushing World First Race, like they're sleeping in hotels. Like it's it's a big thing. So if you so you guys are both going hard. Do they have you guys mm -hmm. casting on the couch, or what? What are you guys doing every day? Um, um, I'm not casting. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm not casting during during the the leveling. But once I hit level sixty, if I do it before the end of the event, um, I might hop on the couch a little bit. You know, hang out with Mr. GM. I know he's going. Uh, Martin Creek is going. I know Preach is going as well. Uh, Bay from Final Boss TV. All those guys are going. So might have some good times. Um, yeah, should be fun. Should be fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, real quick, something else, guys. Uh, just a quick shout out to uh, sponsor for Classic Cast is Displate. Uh, is that so much more Displate working? It may or may not be working right now. Uh, so I'll link it in the chat. Uh, Displate, they, they do the metal posters that you guys have seen. Uh, there's my rag right here. Guys, this guy's, oh, this guy's gonna be dead here in about a week. A little over a week, this guy's gonna be dead. Right, right here. So uh, you guys can also Dude, click that, the split link in the profile. Yeah, that's a that is a great discussion point. Okay, how many days into classic is Ragnaros dying? Let's go around. Tips out. When is Ragnaros dying? Possibly day five or six. Day five or six is six probably is my guess. Um, just so, some of the stuff that I'm hearing from some of these like top guilds that have you know been PTRing for the past six months. There's guys that are supposedly getting to level 60 and under three days played or right around the three days played mark. Just get your Hydraxian. It's not too difficult to get. Get your fire resist. You've got 16 debuff slots, 112 talents. Um, uh, lower armor values confirmed on classic versus Nostcore private servers. So I don't know. Some guys are telling me five or six days. I'll take them at their word. Uh, but I definitely think it'll go down during the event. Mm-hmm. I, I think uh, I I think that it, while it might be like mathematically possible to get it first week, uh, I I just consider potential server crashes and trying to log in and trying to coordinate everything. I, I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be so hard. Like I I don't know. Maybe that's a little bit optimistic for me. I, I think it'll probably still happen in the second week. Um, not saying that it can't 100, percent but I, I just think it's it's generally optimistic i think it could happen in the second week though we actually have somebody in the chat right now from from one of these top guilds actually somebody from nihilum back in the day who raided with kungan and got the world first keltuzad he's in the chat right now his name is rick mm -hmm. rick uh if you could let us know how long do you think it'll take the apes boys to get uh to get ragged down i'm curious but yeah sorry Stacey. go ahead I don't care what he says. Day eight. I think day eight. That's what I think. <laughs> day eight. We'll yeah. see what he says. Okay, I actually do care because he, he's playing up there. But uh, I think day eight. Day eight. LMGD saying six to seven days. Um, you know what yeah. no one said? So NA gets Classic WoW on Monday uh, on the West Coast at 3 p.m. Why is no one going for a uh, like a fourteen hour Regnos? You know, like you can get it before you before the first reset. <laughs> Just level the 16, 14 hours and kill, kill Regnos. Uh, uh, yeah, that's how it goes, dude. Um, 
No, I, I think uh, I think it's going to be interesting to see how it all plays out. And there's a lot of really good guilds, right? We, we've talked about it. Like, you, you know, you used, used Apes as an example. A Apes, there, there's a whole lot of other good guilds. Apes just happens to be one of the guilds that got uh, a significant number of players in the beta. So a lot of people know about them. But it's going to be uh, a lot of a lot of names are going to pop up that have been around the private server scene for a while. And um, there's been a I'll lot tell of you, man. Yeah, go ahead. In my mind, it's apes versus progress. That's what I think. So mm -hmm. we'll we'll see who gets it. Mm -hmm. well, sorry, I, I interrupted you. Dude, salad bakers, dude. Salad bakers. I'm telling you, I believe in the salad bakers. Laddie's going to lead them to victory. That's what it's all about. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So no, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be really cool. It's gonna be interesting to see. I think that uh, a lot of people say like, oh, World First happened 15 years ago, this and that, and uh, sure, like World First and Retail Vanilla happened 15 years ago, but uh, Classic's a different story, right? It's a totally different meta. It's it's different game rules, all this stuff, and regardless of whether or not it's like World First or whatever, if they do fresh server launches, it happened all the time in the private server scene. Everybody, every fresh always talks about like server first this server first that and it's like what have you done for me lately that's how people look at it what have you done for me lately what's your recent success how good are you now i, I think you know it's what? i think it's gonna be interesting to look at it's not gonna be the end of the world but um i i did a uh a short podcast today with a guy from limit and a guy from big dumb guild you know two two mm -hmm. very advanced uh bfa rating guilds and I, I asked him like do you guys it was about classic wow and how things okay. are going to shake up like, play out and i was like so do you guys think that uh you know th there is a classic wow world first regnaros and they were both like yeah you know because obviously the boss was killed 15 years ago and it's been killed on private servers all the time but with classic wow launch people were playing harder there's new methodologies there's a new meta there's mm -hmm. there's a different different individuals involved yeah like it is a different race a different competition i mm -hmm. i totally agree with that yeah yeah i mean it's, it's, so just, it's just something watch. fun yeah it's something yeah. that's just fun right uh yeah. Cause I mean, you, you gotta like you gotta have something. You know what I mean? Like if if you got some soul, dude, you have something to be excited about. I, I think it's I think it's fun to watch. It's interesting to talk about. Uh, while that's certainly not what I'm doing with my guild, my guild is going to be more of like a typical progression style of guild as as opposed to like a speedrunning guild, hardcore guild. Uh, I, I don't think playing a retribution paladin is is conducive to an environment where you're trying to speedrun things. Uh, now I do have some there, there's some some theory crafting of some interesting things as far as like a from a support standpoint, but. Uh, I don't know if I want to go into it too much just yet until I until I test it out a little bit more. Well, dude, but, um, well, I I heard a rumor today about spell power ret. Classic WoW is the dawn of spell power ret, and ret's going to be actually the highest DPS well, spec of any spec. Uh, okay, I I don't think that's going to be the case. But I had been talking about spell power ret for like a couple of years now. I don't, I don't know if you remember yeah. it. I'll stay safe. But I, I I'd been I, I'd been talking about spell power ret for a long time, and then I got banned before I could really. Uh, get the ball rolling on it. So there's, there's they some... banned you for talking about spell power rest? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I believe yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, but I, I think uh, you know a lot of people have done a lot of a lot more research on it and stuff since then. So we'll, we'll see. I mean, I, I uh, I'm I want to try out whatever works best. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I certainly like the physical build and stuff like that. But if uh, if you, if something can work with like a spell power build, then uh, or a majority spell power build as opposed to a hybrid, right? Because you typically like lean into a hybrid at some point. Uh, I think it'll be kind of it'll be interesting. I'm more so thinking about some stuff with Nightfall, right? As far as like a support and like a hardcore grade, but uh, like being able to double up on that. But I'll, I'll, I mean, we can get into that whenever we know that it works. Uh, I think we probably got some questions here that uh, I'll go ahead and load up. I still, I, dude, I still kind of can't believe that we got them on. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, dude, it's nuts, man. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was really really awesome. That they came on. Um, Let's see. Check for hashtag classic cast. Search. Pound classic cast. Dude, I remember uh, whenever I was doing computer science classes in college, I'd get so triggered whenever some there was a kid who was like, uh, I put a hashtag at the top and it's like it's it's a pound sign, dude. It's not a hashtag. Unbelievable. It's boomer. Boomer clap. <sighs> anyway. <laughs> uh, latest. OK. Um. <laughs> uh, I got the stream late. Okay, yeah, we should address this, right? Because people kept asking. Um, this is from Aaron. Aaron says, I got to the stream late. Did you guys or Blizzard make a statement about the LFG add-on? Uh, I talked earlier in the VOD. We talked about it pretty extensively. I, I even tweeted out a clip on my Twitter uh, of, of um, Ian Hezekostas kind of referencing the what they might potentially do with add-ons and and we touched on add-ons like as far as like in from, from like an overview perspective but th they weren't really going to be able to comment on any like one specific add-on like that unless they they had uh 
come to a conclusion or decision from uh, from like a Blizzard standpoint, like from like a, a development team standpoint before they were going to be able to do that. So I, I think we got a, as good as we could get. So uh, no, I'm I, sure I, someone hopefully clipped it. Hopefully someone clipped the, the question and answer mm -hmm. just because I kind of forgot what they said, too. But it sounded like they said that if there's add ons that trivialize the game, and do like they said automation. If there's any add-on that does anything automatically, um, it sounded like they would intervene. But mm -hmm. I can't remember their full answer. If somebody clipped it, they could link it in the chat. That'd be awesome. That that is what Brian ended up saying. He said mm -hmm. if there are if there are add-ons that automate gameplay, they don't like those and are yeah. you know willing to shut those things down. Um, and this actually, tra like okay, I'm just gonna say it. there's an add-on. I forget what it's called. It's a questing add-on that will auto accept and auto turn in quests Leatrix. and <clears throat> Leatrix. Yeah. I don't like that add-on. I wish that add-on was shut down. I don't know about you guys. I I don't like add-ons that like it, it, it's like clicking buttons for you. You know what I mean? What is a? Uh, I'm not familiar. What does it do exactly? I like it so much, dude. <laughs> uh, no, well, it's yeah. I it, get what you're saying though. Yeah, it's it objectively increases leveling speed. Like it, it it helps you level faster. But what it'll do is auto accept, auto complete, auto pick up. So it's like lazy um, quest pig? NPCs. Lazy pig. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Lazy lazy pig. Part of the reason why lazy pig was considered to be such a big deal in private servers. This was this was a post post vanilla add-on too. Lazy pig was as far, as far as I know. Um, maybe I'm wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure it was a post vanilla add-on. Um, lazy pig. Why people liked it so much was because of ranking and trying to get in battlegrounds and stuff. Because people needed that time where it's just like da -da -da -da, it immediately accepts everything. So if you got out of a battleground, you queued as fast as you possibly could to make sure you get in the next one before it fills up. Plus, whoever else joined the queue while you were um, while you were uh, uh, in the game. Sorry. So yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know if something like that is going to end up working or, or not working whenever Classic comes out. But uh, I, I think that's general rule of thumb is they don't like automation. I think that's uh, I think that's a pretty good answer from them as far as as good as we were probably going to get yeah um <clears throat> i will say my favorite part about leatrix actually has nothing to do with like the automated side but it has a setting that reduces the amount of time it takes to loot an object so like you know how in classic because the batching it takes a long time to loot like it just like makes that time like almost instantaneous which mm -hmm. is nice because the looting is just so delayed in classic. Well, what you can do is just right click a corpse and just move on immediately you don't even you don't even have to look at it just It'll come like to you, you, you don't have to wait for the window to it'll come to you yeah don't even i, I would recommend because there is like that batch looting time sometimes it pops up for like it feels like forever and then other times it's like whoop, you just don't even really see it just right click the corpse keep moving i would not mm -hmm. wait to see what's actually in the in the loot thing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh this is a good question this is just interesting how have guild meetings been and how do you guys go about doing your guild meetings um stay safe do you want to start um i can start if you want yeah well i'll i'll say like so i have an app so you can go to my discord chat or look so i'm not, I'm not going to turn this into a, a recruitment post but uh i have i've done like open recruitment asking for people that can play a ton and the phone application to say what they want to play how long they can play etc their experience and uh trial rank or not trial rank depending on how the application goes and we've had several just invoice guild meetings where we have you know each meeting has been um like you know 100 or 150 i think one meeting of 200 people in discord and we're just mm -hmm. I've, I've made like sort of a, a google slides almost like powerpoint presentation going over information and bringing people up to speed and then they can choose to, based on information if the guild's for them or not for them just trying to lay it all out there for people mm -hmm. <laughs> so you uh you you led a guild at one point in, in was it retail burning crusade you had a guild for a little bit mm-hmm yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so you, yeah, and and you you've led a guild before and stuff like that. Um, I've never led a vanilla guild. I think a vanilla guild is a is a beast, and I can already tell you mm -hmm. how much work I've put in. But leading mm -hmm. a vanilla guild is a big hurdle, and I know S one, you know all about that. Oh yeah, dude. I, I mean, so uh, I uh, I I didn't start out as a guild leader in, in my old streams, but uh, I eventually became guild leader of the guild that I was in. I started out as a pug eventually became in it got into leadership i was an officer and then eventually i became the guild leader um and there was a lot that changed during that time uh no no don't sorry not change change uh, a lot of things were adjusted no changes i'm sorry but uh, a lot of things that that basically uh adjusted during that time and we we shaped up the guild quite a bit but um uh, i think that you you experience a lot of things uh, from a guild leadership standpoint, as far as like having guild meetings and kind of knowing what the culture of your guild is and how things want to be um, 
how things are going to be approached throughout the course of the lifespan of your guild. And I think a lot of this stuff, I think a lot of this stuff, it needs to be established very early on. Like you, you come in and you say, hey, like this is what we're doing. This is the type of guild we are and, and lay the foundation early because uh, some, one of the issues that we had in our old guild was we, we didn't really have that strong foundation. We just did things a certain way because that's how we've always done them. Uh, when the reality of it is we should have been doing them this way or, or another way or whatever. Um, I think my guild in classic, I, I want it to have the memes. I want it to be fun. I want it to be a good community environment, uh, for, for everybody, right? I want people to enjoy it, but, uh, you just need to make sure that groundwork is laid down at the beginning. And, and that's really, I, I want it to be a lot like my old guild was, except just have that, have that foundation early on, as opposed to trying to like, you're trying to like shovel stuff under the building after the fact, you know? Um, that's, that's kind of how I feel about it. And as far, oh, sorry, as far as guild meetings go, um, we it was kind of similar situation. We just have a bunch of people in discord, dude, I'll tell you the first time, the first time we got in discord and we did our first guild meeting, like obviously people are going to be excited. People are spamming discord. People are, oh, everybody has their mic open. And, and I just had to say, I was like, yo, like chill out. Like this isn't Twitch chat. And, and I think that that's something that, uh, I think that's something that a lot of people who are like, oh, I don't want to play on a streamer server. Like, I, th I think that's a big concern for a lot of people is that the environment of Twitch is always going to bleed into everything else that people do. Uh, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, it was, it was certainly like that immediately, right? But I, I think we, within, within a few minutes, we kind of calmed everybody down. Maybe like it was honestly not more than like a minute or two. Uh, I was in voice and I said, hey, like this is, you know, this isn't Twitch. This is our Discord meeting or our guild meeting. Sorry, we're in Discord. It's a little bit different. It's a different environment. I don't think I had a single person interrupt me and I just talked straight for two hours. It was great. It was like I was streaming. <laughs> that's great. And I mean, that's that's sort of a test in and of itself, right? Because if you have a if you have a guy or a couple of people in your mm -hmm. meeting voice chat that just can't calm down, they're interrupting, they're going crazy. OK, now, you know, those are people that should not be in your guild. They have just disqualified themselves. That's sort of how I look at it. Mm hmm. Yeah, so yeah. no, it, it was uh, it was definitely a good experience, and I think uh, I think a lot of people understand that, and a lot of people say, "Oh, Zoomers." I'll tell you what, most people in my guild are probably my average age for my guild is like twenty five, twenty six. So yeah, yeah, I think that's I think that's a lot of people. Uh, have you guys have you guys had any kind of Zoomers like younger, like under twenty year olds join your guilds? I don't think um, I have anybody under twenty in the guild. I, I have I have a couple younger people that I've invited. Uh, Not you, that I'm. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I, mean, not, go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say, not really that I'm aware of. And, you know, exceptions could be made, but I really don't want people that are younger than like 18 in the guild. It's just, uh, it, young people act differently, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm not, yeah, I'd rather just not have them in the guild. Dude, yeah. uh, you're being ageist, dude. What are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah no. I, I guess I am. That's the no. way it is. <laughs> I think uh, no, I absolutely think that's a thing. Like you might have a you might have a situation where I, I do think everybody's different, right? But certain people at certain ages have certain uh, tendencies, right? They 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 just they think differently. They might have different goals, whatever. Uh, but uh, but no, I, I think it's fine. I, I don't know if I have. I have a few eighteen year olds. I have a few people like maybe they're just starting college or something like that uh, that are that are joining the guild. But I think it's cool, right? And this is kind of something that we've talked about in the past the younger generation of people who never got a chance to really play classic back in the day, but they want to play classic. Now, a lot of the best players, I mean, a lot of the best players that, that we played with on private servers, if you think about it, they were, they're probably in their low twenties and didn't play retail classic, you know, or they, they didn't play it at a very high level. You're, you're right. Um, you're right that a lot of young players can be very, very good, but can they handle themselves in social situations and not right. overreact to things? And like, it's more of a social dynamic issue that I have than just a skill mm -hmm. issue, right? And and that's that's kind of where you have to you have to go figure that out on a case by case basis. Is how I feel. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the question was more like census oriented. Like, I'm curious, like how many younger players are getting into classic? I know, like, I had a couple of younger players in the guild, no longer there. Um, but like in general, overall, it, it seems like not too many young people so far have gotten into classic, at least for, from my po point of view. But yeah. maybe they're doing like we used to do and they're just saying they're older than they are <laughs> so, they can, maybe, yeah. so they can download iTunes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, let's see. Um... Is there any is there anybody in the chat who is younger than 20 years old and is going to play WoW Classic out of curiosity just for census, yeah, census yeah, purposes? Smile. Yeah. 
Um, I'm sure a lot. I mean, so Twitch doesn't give us uh, age demographics, I don't think, but YouTube does. And YouTube I'm does. sure you guys have similar, mm -hmm. similar analytics. It's like 70% of my YouTube viewers are men between 25 and 35. Mm -hmm. like that's the demographic of classic mm -hmm. wow <laughs> i have and I, I, i'm not i'm not kidding when i say this i have 0.01 <laughs> female viewers on youtube same dude <laughs> 0.01 women hey squad w <laughs> <laughs> yeah um i uh i don't remember what mine is i i know the the overwhelming majority of mine was was definitely uh males from 25 to 36 or whatever the number was uh mm -hmm. 20, 24 to 35 whatever, whatever dudes it was. only yeah yeah hot mm -hmm. dudes only so uh yeah and then uh the, the remaining is uh other so i mean that's that's just uh that's just kind of how it goes right uh it, it's a lot of it's a lot of guys it's a lot of 25 year old boomers trying to relive the glory days maybe they're single guys late 20s early 30s which is how it is um let's see <sighs> um Do you think the underdog specs, this is from Mike, do you think underdog specs like prop paladins will be more prominent this time around? Uh, yes, I do think, uh, I do think having off specs and stuff, people have figured out how to play these off specs uh, retroactively quite well for what they are. But as far as like a, an effectiveness standpoint and, and being optimal, it, it's, it's just not as optimal as uh, like a few, like let's say a rep paladin, right? Let's take, let's take rep paladin for example. Uh, you just don't do as much damage as the Fury Warrior. You just you just don't do as much damage as a Rogue. That, that's just how it is. That's the game. That's that's the cost of playing a hybrid class. Uh, but as far as knowing how to do the content and the difficulty of the content, it's not like having one of these guys is going to make it to where you can't clear the raids. I, I think if you're wiping on a boss, it's certainly not going to be because you have one Feral or one Ret or one whatever in your raid. Uh, it's going to be because your raid didn't do the job right. Uh, even if that one guy is doing less damage or whatever. Yeah. So, agree 100%. I will mm -hmm. say, if there's one hybrid class or one kind of meme spec that's going to do decently well compared to how it did back in the day, I'd say it's probably Feral Druids. Yeah, Feral Druids. Um, I think... I think feral druids is probably the best. Uh, I, I don't like. I don't like. I don't think feral's that bad at all. And leader of the pack is so good. The people love leader of the pack. I mean, that, that crit bonus for your group is really nice. Uh, Shadow is another one. Uh, Shadow is one that's really really good. And Shadow's going to be better than it was on private servers because you typically don't go Shadow until patch one point seven on private servers. But you're going to have sixteen debuff slots from the start, so you can have a Shadow priest in your raid from phase one. So, Stacey, are you doing that? Are you going to have a Shadow Priest right off the bat? So, if we had a Shadow Priest, we'd have a Power Weaving Priest. I don't think full Shadow. Okay. Um, but I don't know that in Phase 1 or Phase 2, we're going to really want to have enough Warlocks to justify yeah. having a Shadow Priest uh, or a Shadow Weaving to buff the Warlocks. I think we might run with two Warlocks. Um, oh, really? I'll say this, though. Yeah. Um, I'll say this, classic WoW, and you can clip this, whatever, there's going to be a Boomkin revolution, okay? Everyone's going to realize Boomkins <laughs> are the meta. You're going to want one in your caster group. Dude, Boomkins are going to pop. Trust me, man. Just trust one me. Boomkin with mages. Just uh, trust me, dude. It's going to be big. I, I think, uh, what, what's the number for Warlocks and Shadow Priest? Is it five Warlocks is when it tips? Is that is that the um, number? I don't remember. Oh, to, to keep up ISB? For, for everything, like all things considered. Whenever you have a Shadow Priest, whenever you have Improved Shadow Bowl, everything. Um, I, I'm not sure. Like the the big the big thing I'm aware of is is whether or not you can have 100 percent of the time on ISB. You want like four mm -hmm. warlocks that have like 20 percent or 20 between 20 to 25 percent spell crit. Then you can have just about 100 percent ISB of time. Yeah. I, I'm not sure about. Yeah, I guess I'm not sure about what you're asking. I think okay. it's the shadow weaving debuff. Like, at what point is it worth it to bring a shadow priest? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm talking about. Warlocks? Yeah, like yeah. all all buffs considered, I, like the 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 tipping point. I, yeah, I would say, dude, I, if you're like really trying to min max a roster, probably not till AQ, honestly. Yeah. Like yeah. I know I know a lot of good guilds like Molten Core, BWL, they only bring two warlocks. They don't even they don't even debuff um Curse of Shadow. They have Curse mm -hmm. of Wreck and Curse of Elements. Like th like the warlocks are only there as for for those two debuffs, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How are you gonna do Gar with two warlocks? Are you gonna do like the just tank multiple strat? So that might be a situation where there, there are some tank memes you can do. Yes, that. Um, maybe you can do a hunter kiting strategy. We'll have to see if, how, how far maybe. the edge leash. Um, yeah. On top of that, 
uh, like it might be a situation where we have more warlocks until the raid is geared and we can just sort of over gear it and then we drop warlocks. We'll have to see. Mm. Yeah. Cool. That's interesting. I, I, I always like hearing like how other guilds do stuff because I think what we're probably going to end up doing is we are going to have tanks tank everything separately and then we'll have half of them. Like every, every tank will probably have two ads as a responsibility and they just go pick up the one after that one's killed and, and not banished anymore. That's probably the strategy we're going to go with and then kill guard last. And then eventually we'll do like the AOE, the big, just, I'm going yeah. deep. Yeah. Dude, you're going to, I'm, I'm telling you, like every time I say this, people in chat are like, no way, dude. There are going to be guilds, like probably mm -hmm. the majority of guilds in Classic WoW that get hard stuck on Gar for like a week or two. Seriously, yeah. like Gar, Gar is going to be a progression boss for most guilds in Classic WoW. Like I genuinely believe that. Yeah, I think there's going to be guilds who who they, they walk in, they think it's going to be a walk in the park, and and while some things certainly are going to be, I, I think Gar is one of those bosses that has the potential of, of getting people hung up a little bit. I mean, we, we got hung up on it on private server, and in, in, but whenever I just joined the guild, uh, we got hung up on Gar before I was leading or anything. So it was uh, it's just something that happens. So uh, next question. Did you guys see with the Q and A that on, on the subreddit the other day? bindings are dropping in phase one. Oh, dude that phase was so bindings. interesting to me do you know what that means the, the, their answer was like just because you didn't see it in one point just because you didn't see it before 1.4 doesn't mean it wasn't there so what that means is bindings and i've sulfurous could always drop from patch 1.1 but nobody ha just it happened to be that nobody ever saw it until 1.4 patch for both of them because rag rag was not killed until 1.4 patch had come out for the first time so no, you couldn't have right. seen that. And then right. the bindings, it would have right. been Gar and Baron Geddon, but still, same thing. Like, it's just, it's just random chance. It's so rare. So how crazy is it that even after 15 years, nobody knew that? Everybody thought that they came out patch 1.4 because that was the earliest uh, uh, record of when they dropped. I yeah. think that's super yeah, cool. it's true. Now, the big question that I'm really curious about, mm -hmm. are we going to see Ani heads in phase one? Because if there are Ani heads in phase one, like that, that's actually a big game changer for going for a world first classic Ragnaros, I think, because you're probably going to have a guild go in and try to get an Ani head, pop it before they go. In. You know what I mean? Probably, uh -huh. Very likely. So so I, I actually didn't know this. I talked to Nano uh, from the Nostalrius team. For those of you guys who don't know who Nano, uh, Nano was the, the head of quality assurance for Nostalrius. Uh, I was talking to Nano. He said that uh, Anixia head actually doesn't drop in, uh, it, it, I think it doesn't drop till phase two. It didn't. It didn't drop right at the beginning of the game. So, uh, doing an Ixia before MC, I think, is going to be good for the sake of getting loot or stuff. But but you're not going to have the Oni head at least until phase two. Uh, so I think the only thing that's going to be, um, I think the only the only world buff at that point would be the Songflower. Correct me if I'm wrong, because the hey, itemization buddy. question was a little bit was a little bit the way it was answered was a little complicated. So I'm not sure if I got 100. percent but didn't they basically say that anything that dropped up until patch 1.9 will drop at the start of Classic? That's how I understood it. But that's the way I took it, and that's why I was like, okay, maybe Ani had phase one. I, we're just going to have to see, man. We're just going to have to see. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah actually, that's a good point. Uh, maybe, they, maybe they are just going to do it like that. Um, hmm. You might be right. Actually, Anixia head probably does drop phase one because of that. That's a good point. Uh, and you know what? You know what I would love to see, and I, I think like people that play vanilla remember this. So early on in vanilla, we talked about this before. Early on in vanilla, Mol uh, Ragnaros despawned after one hour. You had one hour to fight him before he went away mm -hmm. for the week. In late vanilla, it was increased to two hours. I think it would be hilarious if you have a guild that it's like day six of classic WoW. Oh, they're sleep no. deprived. They've been hustling. And they wipe once or twice on Ragnaros because they're just they're just like burnt out, mm -hmm. and he despawns, and the lockout's wasted. Yeah, that would be hilarious. That would be amazing. I hope that happens. The drama behind that would be so interesting to watch. Oh yeah, dude, it'd that'd be, be dude, such so oh, good. good that'd be so good because here's the thing: they would want to wake up right after the reset and get in there as soon as possible. They would have to. Like, they have to totally work their schedules around it, I and, think. You know, maybe that's what these guilds are thinking. Okay, this is why we need a day six, reg day six Ragnaros, because if we fudge it, we wait 12 hours, we get a reset, we go in again. Who knows? Yeah, maybe. Uh, so, yeah, actually, I, I just looked it up. Wowhead has a log of, like, things that are available in what phase. And uh, for, I think it's all data mined. And Onyxia Head would drop in phase one, according to this. So, uh, yeah, I mean, based on, what, based on what they said about the itemization and what wowhead says then yeah anixia head would be available so 
if you want to go in for that first rag run and try and get an Nixie ahead beforehand, that probably or for first MC run, it'd probably be a, a good idea. So, yeah, and and we all know that Ani is on a five day reset, so reset probably starts Tuesday for NA. So you know, maybe maybe we'll see people doing a five day Ani run and then a day six MC run if that's the schedule they're trying to go on. I don't know because I it makes sense you would want to do an Ani run before you go in and do MC. Mm -hmm. I mean, the who knows, dude? Though, especially Horde side, the attunement's a little brutal, but. Yeah, I mean, if you could pull it off, if you could pull it off, it could be really good. Uh, but but if you could manage to get an Ixia run in, I mean, imagine if you dropped a like a, a Deathbringer or something, or a oh, uh, or a Viscag. You get a Viscag or a Deathbringer early on for somebody going into MC. That'd be such so like so huge. Um, mm -hmm. uh, looking back at the very first class, this is from Fishy Lawn Gnome. Looking back at the very first class cast a year and a half ago, what's it like to have come so far and have the lead developers on a few days before launch? Um, it's kind of crazy, man. Because, like, I don't think this is something that, like, ever was expected. We kind of just started this as an outlet for us to talk about Classic whenever, like, kind of how, how the story of Classic cast came about. Um, I, I had just gotten banned, and uh i, I just got banned from streaming on youtube I, I was i was a private server streamer all this stuff that's how i made friends with stay safe stay safe he streamed a little bit but he mostly did like videos and stuff back then and uh i got banned trying to figure out what i was doing uh, we, I, I was in the process of that i said hey well i'm just gonna ask blizzard i'm just gonna try and email somebody just trying to ask around find out what i can do and uh see what the rules are and they basically said you can't do private server content so if you can't do private server content. You can't really do classic content the way that I was doing it before, which was mostly gameplay. Uh, I was mostly a gameplay streamer back then. And uh, I, I went and I told a few people and I said, hey, guys, I got why. Well, first off, I told a few people that, hey, like, I'm, I'm going to go do this and see what they say. And this will help out all of us. And it was like, OK, cool. And Stacey was there. Actually, we were in Discord together and we were talking about that before I before I, I guess, announced that I was going to do that. And then uh, and then I came back and I told Stay Safe and a few other people what the results were. Um, and we basically stay safe kind of had my back like right off the bat and he's like okay like no more private server content like I, I got your back like we're like let's do this the right way let's do the right thing and we uh we came up with the idea of basically like we should do a podcast but it kind of well, got dude, tabled and, and even before that like we were boys before classic got it like i i actually had joined your guild at one point i was yeah. with you in raid three and bwl mm -hmm. before uh elysium became lights hope right so so okay. Yeah, that's how. That's how. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and so it's funny because we were actually like before Classic was announced, we were like, dude, should we do a vanilla podcast? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we, Classic we... got announced. It's like, okay, let's do this. <laughs> well, we we talked about it, and uh, we, we it came up, it came up again after the announcement, but then we we didn't really we we didn't have like our our, our people to talk about, and then tips. Uh, tips got a hold of me and was like, "Hey, would you be interested in starting a podcast?" I'm like, "It's funny that you say that because Stay Safe and I had talked about this, and you know, let's let's figure this out. Let's meet. Let's see what we want to do, and and we'll go from there. And that's kind of how Classic Cast started. And it was like I said, it was an outlet for us to basically do classic content without physically being able to play the game, because uh, that's what I mean, that's what we were. I mean, we were we were just just vanilla boys. And uh, to see how much Classic Cast has grown and how many people support the show and uh, how many people tune in to watch and not only getting support from you guys, but I mean, even even to the point where the the classic devs a few days before launch are willing to come on, like that's that's absolutely insane. And I never in a million years could have uh, could have imagined that. So I mean, that's that's a big testament to you guys being supportive of us too. I mean, it's not it's not really just us. It's you guys you guys yeah. being supportive of us and believing in us too. So that's thank the you guys. truth. Like yeah. viewers give the streamer the platform, and then the the streamers or the content creators can do either. Good or bad with the platform the viewers give them. So uh, we've tried to do our best, I I hope. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like we love and, you guys so much. Like honestly, like yeah. Remember remember the first class? Do you remember how many views we had in the first class cast? I think we I think we had like I don't. It was somewhere between a hundred and two hundred, I think. It was like low hundreds. I think it was low hundreds. The crazy you know thing is there's Sorry, people that are in the chat right now that were there in the first one, like yeah. Firehead. Fishy yeah. Lawn Gnome, I think, was in the first one, too. Um, LMGD says he was there. That's crazy. Was there, Heisenberg yeah. was there, I'm pretty sure, as yeah. well. That's crazy, man. Yeah, Toast you know has what been I was since my vanilla streams. So, guys, in a little bit after, maybe like a couple minutes, I might actually start streaming. And uh, mm -hmm. I was thinking, 
I might actually watch class. I might watch on my stream today, classic cast number one, and see how wrong we what's were. changed, <laughs> how how wrong we were. Because this is we're talking over a year and a half. Mm -hmm. It's almost two years ago, and yeah. see what's what's happened in the last two years. Mm -hmm. Man, dude, it, it's so funny how like I feel like the things that we used to talk about then are so trivial. And it's just like now completely like in no discussion, like why are we even talking about this? It'll be really funny to watch that. That'll be that'll be really funny to watch and just kind of see how wrong we were about so many things. And uh, I, th we're going to say the same thing. Classic is going to get close to, to ending and we're going to say the same. We're going to say some things about this podcast right now. It's like, oh, look at us talking about like Classic Plus or TBC and Fresh Servers and kind of what our opinions are there, because. Over time, like, you know, you, you have uh, everybody's a product of their experiences, right? Their opinions are formed from that. So over time, we might see some certain things and, and we might learn certain things and go through certain things that change our opinion on on uh, what we think about certain subjects. So uh, I do think it's cool to go back and watch and, and see how that happens. So it, it is it is really, really cool. Um, yeah. Are we ending? Uh, no, not quite. We'll, let's, we'll take a couple more questions before we before we finish out. So again, if you guys want to tweet out any questions at us, it's a uh, hashtag classic cast at S fan TV at Stacey Warlock at tips out baby. Go ahead and add us. I'm searching for hashtag classic cast and uh, you guys can follow us as well. If you want to do that. And also if you guys came in late to the podcast, I'm going to be host or I'm going to be posting, excuse me, this episode of classic cast with the uh, vanilla devs, uh, Omar and Brian. Uh, I'm going to be posting it on YouTube. So youtube.com slash S fan TV. Uh, you guys can go check that out and you guys could, should make, make sure to check out, uh, stay safe's YouTube and tips YouTube as well. So, uh, make a classic cast playlist. I have one and I'm, I'm working on, uh, I've, I've been working on this for a while now, but, uh, I'm trying to, uh, I'm, I'm trying to get some help on, uh, getting, put it on like an audio platform too. Like maybe put it on Spotify or, or something like that as well. Um, uh, I think it should be, I think it should be good. Um, so yeah. Uh, what are some, oh, this is a good question. Jamie, what, <laughs> anytime I say the name Jamie, I think of Jingle All The Way. Jamie, uh, what are some things you guys wanted to, wanted to see in Classic that you didn't get? For example, I know Stay Safe said he wanted the unarmored epic mounts, which I agree with, by the way. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll second that, right? I think the unarmored epic mounts are kind of like a token of pride. And uh, uh, I think it's something that it's, it's, you know, there's not achievements, right? Achievements in Classic WoW, they're not on paper. They're 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 in here. You know what I mean? They're intangible. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't say what you have. You can look at somebody and you be like, oh, that guy has an unarmored epic mount. He got his epic mount before Phase Two came out. Or I mean, I, I honestly, this is how I feel. I think if if the concern is that it's going to happen too fast and people are going to feel rushed to do it, I would not be opposed to them having unarmored epic mounts for the first two phases, and then in Phase Three making it to where. Uh, in Phase Three making it to where it goes to the armored epic mounts. I, I I wouldn't have been opposed to that. I just think the unarmored epic mounts are something that's really cool. In my opinion, they look better. I, I actually like how they look more, uh, but I also think it's cool. It's like kind of like a badge of honor. So, yeah. Oh, what, what do you guys yeah, have to say? I, I've got to say, like, I, I just really totally disagree with their logic on not having the unarmored, unarmored epic mounts. Like, the reason they said was that some people want to level more slowly and play with their friends and just enjoy the process. Like, phase one is probably going to be four or five months, right? Like, that's my, mm -hmm. that's my guesstimate, maybe four months. So, like... Mm -hmm. That's quite a lot of time. On top of that, you have to make a choice. How do you how do you want to play the game? I think that I think that hardcore players should be catered to as they were back in the day, and more casual players are catered to catered to in different ways. I mean, like you you could use this argument or the justification for a lot of things in WoW that have gone down, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like I just don't think it stands up very well. There might be I, if I, I mean, my, my original theory was it's probably because they're backporting the 112 systems and mounts kind of fall under like systems, not so much the content side. So that's why they couldn't reverse it. But I don't know. It sounded like they had, you know, an actual reason for it. I, I mean, I'm in, I'm in stay safe's camp here. I wish they just, I wish they just brought it in. It would have been cool. A nice little mm -hmm. exclusive thing you get if you level fast. And uh, I'm not sure if they're open to changing it, you know, four days in advance, but it would be cool if they did. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I, I completely agree with both of you guys. Um, so this is a good question. This is more of a community related question. And this is from, uh, from B. He says, do you think that they will bring back the screenshot of the day on the website? I don't know if they're going to bring back any sort of like screenshot of the day stuff, kind of fun community stuff like that. But let me tell you something else 
that if they don't bring it back on the website, a community that you can get involved in, especially if you want to play on Fairlina, uh, we've actually made a Fairlina Discord server and a Fairlina subreddit. And the Fairlina Discord server, I believe, is just discord.gg slash Fairlina PvP. Is that right? Discord.gg slash Fairlina PvP. I hope that's right. Uh, click. Uh, or is that wrong? I think that's wrong. Just no, Fairlina. No, slash Fairlina. Like. Sorry, just Fairlina, not Fairlina PvP. My bad. That's the subreddit. The subreddit is uh, the Fairlina subreddit. PvP. The subreddit is Fairlina PvP. So uh, reddit.com slash r slash Fairlina PvP. Um, we're going to go there. We'll show this off for a second. Oh, wrong thing. There we go. We're going to show this off just for a second. So yeah, there's a, there's a lot of good, interesting stuff on here. Uh, just good, fun memes. People are posting like, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just, just funny, funny memes. Here's, here's, uh, oh, dude, this one's even better. It's already up there, dude. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's this really is even good. better. But yeah, no, this is just like a, a fun community place. There's 2.6k people in the, uh, on, uh, on the Reddit right now. So, uh, if you guys want to go ahead and join that subreddit and, and get involved there, and then also the Discord server, if you guys are looking for a guild, if you guys are want to talk about any interesting community stuff, uh, absolutely, absolutely use this. And uh, I mean, even if you're not right, even if you're not playing on Fairlina, you might want to take a look at at this subreddit for all the fun memes and stuff that comes out of it. I, I know Eric Eric posted his his uh, intro videos on uh, on the subreddit too, so you guys can check that out there as Those well. Are really good. Yeah, there's a lot of really funny stuff here, man. Like you can even go to like I think uh top all time where is it um yeah Did the, eric make the horde ones uh eric made the horde ones as well too yeah so like streamers enter the battle alliance there's a horde one somewhere i don't know where it went but I uh see a guy say meme reddits dan's game listen man like i don't blame you most reddits have very very bad memes mm -hmm. one standard we have a very high, high standard, standard meme excellence high quality yes, memes. on this subreddit don't even worry about it wouldn't, wouldn't you say we're uh, I would say we're we're a bit of a meme connoisseurs is what I would call ourselves. Absolutely. Yeah, meme absolutely. connoisseurs. Yeah. Very revolutionaries. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, indubitably. <laughs> so uh, did we talk to Omar? Yes, we did. But guys, this will be posted on YouTube. YouTube.com slash SFANTV. It'll be posted uh, tomorrow. Um, let's take one last question. One last question uh, before we end for the day and Stacey continues his stream. Um one last question. Um, hmm. Hey guys, this is relevant because this is our last classic cast before the launch of WoW Classic in four days. And then we're, gonna, we're, we're probably going to take a break for probably about two weeks and then we'll come back uh, just for the, the launch, uh, launch craziness. Hey guys, what do you think will be the combined viewership for Classic on Twitch at launch? We've talked about this before, but... What would you say? I think now is the most relevant time to talk about it. Tips, what do you think? You, if I remember correctly, BFA's launch had around five to six hundred thousand. I think I think something like that. Is that is that right? Is that right? I, I remember it being in a, it was like an absurd number. I, I think it was it was something crazy. Um I wish I could I, so, I wonder if I could look that up. Yeah, BFA, someone's saying BFA was 600K. If BFA mm -hmm. was 600K, without all the non-endemic streamers like Shroud and Tim and all those guys, Lyric, Summit, all those guys playing, if you add those guys on top of that, I would not be surprised if it hits a million. Um, I, I do think it's going to be larger than BFA's. Whether it hits a million, I don't know, but I would not be surprised mm -hmm. if it did. Yeah. We're, We're going to break a million. I think so. We're breaking a million. Mm-hmm. I I think that I think it'll be I think the low end is 500k. I think that's the low end. But whenever you factor in all the other streamers, like like Tip said, all the people who are coming back for classic or uh, I mean, just classic is like a whole it, it's it's like a, a massive snowball that's just been picking up hype over the last two years. I think uh, I, I would not be surprised to see it approach a million. Is it going to actually hit a million? We'll see. But uh, I think it's certainly going to get close. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Supposedly, Tim Tim yesterday was saying that uh, he's he's willing to take a month and just go hard and classic. Yeah, well, you better do it as Alliance because we got no freaking streamers that are Alliance on Fairlina compared to Horde. I'll tell you that <laughs> much. I got, hey, Tim, if you see this, 
We're going to have some words at TwitchCon if you're not playing Alliance, okay? I'm telling you right now. Unbelievable. So I got to say, I, th I think for, like, I really think Fairlina is going to be like streamer memes aside. I don't think it's going to be that bad. I think Fairlina is going to be a great server. Like, I really actually think that mm -hmm. it's going to be think the it's greatest gonna be, server in it's the gonna history be a lot of, fun. of I, I think I think every server is going to have its own kind of culture and community and stuff like that that comes from it. And I think that uh, like uh, there's a lot of people like this. Right. Like you might you might watch reality TV. That server is going to be like a reality TV show. Like I might not want to live in in the jersey shore house but I, I might watch it and just kind of watch just watch the flames from a distance just sit there and just watch just look <laughs> interesting <laughs> so i i don't know I, I think it'll be i think it'll be fun to watch for a lot of people fun to follow along with and uh i, I think it's certainly going to be fun to play on too so it'll be it'll be really cool so um any last thoughts guys do you guys have anything else Dude, this was a great class cast. I, I still am sort of in shock that they came on. Espe I, I mean, especially because they're four days from launch. They've got to be super busy right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really, really thankful. Really, really thankful that they came on and uh, their willingness to kind of like uh, communicate with the community more and uh, work with content creators more and stuff like that. I, I think that that's, yeah, uh, that, that was really incredible. I hope you guys had fun, man. I, I, I was trying, like we, we talked about this before, but we were trying not to talk too much and kind of, we, we only had a short amount of time with them and we wanted to let them roll and, and we didn't really want to interrupt them and let them talk and, and let them really give their piece because uh, th there was a lot of people, it's, it's such a rare opportunity to get to do that, then, then we need to give them as much time as possible. So we were really, really excited about that and uh, I think it went really, really well. Mm -hmm. Honestly, this whole past two years has been an amazing journey. And uh, I just want to say big thank you to Asfan and Stay Safe, uh, to both of you guys, honestly, this whole time. It's been a pleasure knowing you guys, and uh, it's been an awesome ride since the beginning. And, like, yeah, I, uh, I'm, really, I'm really happy to be here and, and, you know, doing this stuff with you guys. And thanks to everybody watching, supporting us over the past two years. It's I can't even believe it's happening. Like I, I'm just at a loss. It's really awesome. It's been a really really fun time. Hundred mm. percent. So, anyways, guys, thank you so much for joining us. And Stay Safe is going to continue his stream. We'll we'll host into Stay Safe. I'll uh, I'll read off subs and donations and stuff to make sure I'm caught up on everything, so I don't leave anybody out before I host. And we'll see you guys next time. Take care, boys. See you guys soon. Peace.